Tēnā koutou katoa, koutou Belvin Tako Ingoa, welcome to the 2022 Inline Hockey National Championships here in Kirikiriawa uh, in Hamilton, the beautiful city in the mighty Waikato. We're about to get underway with our finals day here, Sunday the 9th of October. But first, we're going to go down and we're going to catch up uh, with Ian Wanamaker, who's going to have a chat down on the sidelines uh, to set us underway. Ian. Atamari, kia ora, tēnā koutou, tēnā koutou, tēnā koutou katoa. Uh, no, Collingwood, um, Blue Mountains, te moanga. No, um, Narawa Saga, te awa. No, Canada, aho. Ko Ian Wanamaker, toko inawa. Kia ora whanau, welcome to the beautiful Kiri Kiri Roa down here in Hamilton, New Zealand, Aotearoa. Um, we are looking at live coverage of the... New Zealand inline national <laughs> tournament. So in a, I'm going to be joined by the chairperson of the IHNZ, Mr. Cameron McIver. Cameron, great to see you here. Can you just tell me a little bit about this tournament and what the Nationals is, please? Cheers, Ian. So, so our National Club Championships is our annual event um, that culminates in the best of the best showing up to our um, end of year tournament. Um, it's the first time we've had in three years, so we're really excited to be able to sort of have this happening this year. Um, it's been an amazing experience. I can't remember the last time things were so tight. Um, got a huge public support, a great hockey community that have made it this year. It's a really special event for us this year. Awesome. Excellent. I bet you're looking forward to the action. We're just about to cross soon to the um, bronze medal game here between the Wellington Wolves and the... Um, who else have we got here, Todd? What, and the Thunder. All right. Excuse me, the live-in Thunder. So um, we're going to cross up to Mr. Todd Belvin, our co-commentator. Thank you very much, Cameron, for joining us and introducing this broadcast brought to you by Fakata Māori. Thanks, Ian. Cheers. Thank you very much, Ian, and uh, uh, welcome. We're already uh, on the board here. Sweet. The Sorry, Wellington Wolves already uh, got a yeah, nice little goal there to start us oh, off. Yeah. It's only uh, 45 seconds into the game and uh, on the board already. Let's have a look at the team list at the moment. So the Wellington Wolves, we have Brad Ears, uh, Lucas Allen, Jackson Baker, Matt Chan, Mariki John Swicksky, Jonathan Stewart, Nick Tom, Joe Dowman, Harriet Fuller, Sophie Walker, Nick Robinson, Ben Dowman, Hayden Johnson, Jason McLean, and that's coached by Nick Tom and managed by Matt Chan. That's the Wellington Wolves lineup for this playoff for the bronze medal. Coming out of Levin Thunder, we have uh, Zach Bovey, Edwin uh, Roz, Zaran Hurst, Jack Houston, Brooklyn Landon Potua, Ben Thompson, Adam Foster, Troy Brothwick, Brent Douglas, and Arden Phillips as the coach and Shirley Marsh as the manager. So those are the two teams lining up here for this senior playoff for the bronze medal. Thanks for joining us for this live action today in Kirikiri Awa watching the 2022 inline hockey nationals. As we see Levin Thunder controlling the puck here at the moment. Just trying to set some plays up. Both teams in this early sort of uh, opening minutes, even though there's been an early goal, just trying to feel each other out. It's all about moving the puck around. Two 20-minute halves they play, so there will uh, be a half-time for about two minutes. Reset the clock. As we see the Wolves come down, nice little play there, shot on goal. Left the puck behind, though, turns it back over to the Levin Thunder as they just try and set up a nice little breakaway here. Goalie's going to cover that up. So the goalie will just slow the play down here, just take a breath, reset the teams. They'll take that opportunity to put some subs on. So as we have a look, uh, both teams have a couple of lines. So four on the rink, plus their goalie. If you're new to joining us today, we'll try and explain what's happening out on the rink as much as we possibly can. It does get a little bit confusing at times. So Levin Thunder again take control of the puck. Just... Looking for some opportunities to move that goalie. The goals are small, and these goalies are wearing a lot of gear on them. So it is hard to get that little black puck around them. Shot there by Harriet Fuller, but high and wide. Adam Foster just trying to get a little breakaway there from the Thunder, just stumbling on the puck. Wall's back on attack. 
A little bit scrappy at the moment. Shot by Joe Dowman. Thunder back in control. Zion Hurst there. Got the puck. Just using the opportunity while they've got the puck to get a couple of changes in place. Down the rink go the Thunder. Block shot. Ooh, might have... Uh, Thunder and still in control at the moment. Looks like he's okay, though. We, uh, yeah, these guys are pretty tough, though, eh, Todd? They, they, they carry are. on. These are finals, so. Yeah, yeah, this is, uh, you know, it's not like ice hockey, but it, they are, uh, some of them do play ice, and it is a, a fairly uh, robust game at times. It's a, it's a non-contact sport in line, but there is a little bit of uh, contact. But the referees uh, try and keep a fairly tight game as Levin Thunder look to control the game here. They've got the puck. They're one up. It's only about four minutes in, five minutes into this first period of the playoff for third and fourth. I did notice that the uh, the Thunder there will, they try to hold on to that puck a little bit, Todd, when they have a lead. Is that something that some teams do in inline while they have that lead just to kind of protect it? Or is that a tactic that you've noticed? Yeah, it is. So uh, they definitely try and hold that puck and just set up the play. It's a, it's a small rink. It's slightly smaller than ice hockey. Uh, you've got four big uh, players out there controlling around. So they're just trying to hold the puck, set the play up, use the whole rink. They can go backwards and forwards and, and side to side. So they're just trying to uh, create some options. Big goalies in front of little nets and little goals. So Yeah, I did notice I was speaking to, uh, I think it was Carl Cooper. He's hailing with from the uh, Stingrays organization. And his son plays in goal. He's called Zane. And they have... Um, they have really, they've reduced the size of the width of the pads lately. I think it's down to 11 inch. I don't know, you may be able to speak to that as you have a boy that plays <laughs> in goal. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's, the pads are important. Yeah, they are. Um, so you'll notice if you're looking on the screen when we get a shot of the goalies that they are. Uh, the, the well, oh, oh, great shot there. That's, that's an in and out. That's Downman. a lovely shot. Right upstairs, yeah. directly over top of that big padded goaltender yeah. that we mentioned. And off the crossbar and down. We say bar down, yeah. bar down and in. That's a great shot. As we get it here on the replay. Pass comes across and then Dowman gets it. He makes no mistake. Goes yeah. upstairs real quickly as well. Equalizing this game. Oh, I should say. That, is two that up. Two they're up. up two? Wow. Okay. Yeah. So they've gotten a two goal lead. Yeah. And I suppose that's that's that move we're talking about. They uh, pass across the front of the goal. The goalie had to slide across and, and move pretty quickly. But Joe Dowman just a rocket shot. Upstairs. Hit the top uh, bar and net. And that's a goal. The Wellington Wolves off to a flyer. Yeah, just looking at their jerseys here, Todd, they've got some quite bright blue coloring here. Um, as we look on the scoreboard, showing that we have Thunder. The, Wolves, the Thunder up by two, but it is actually the Wolves who are up at the moment with the Thunder looking to come back. They are a um, dangerous team as they've got a number of New Zealand reps and former New Zealand reps in that side. Looking out there, number 26, Ben Thompson. Also played for that New Zealand Maori side um, when we had the Matariki tournament series. Yeah, yeah nice to have that uh, oh, experience. We've got a penalty here, Todd. Someone's gone down and directly behind the goal. Two players have collided. Yeah, looks like uh, the referee's called interference on that. So that'll be two minutes in the bin. What looked like a bit of a fairly innocent play is the one player's going behind the net here and bang two players just crash right into each other often in puck pursuit you're looking at the puck carrier but the man didn't see the other man and bang straight into one another possibly accidental but um, that will be called interference so as much as we say there is a bit of contact you cannot uh, interfere with someone sk skating to that degree you've got to let them uh, about to move freely. You can battle hard on the puck and play their stick and and lean on them a little bit at times, but 
That is uh, an interference call. So power play for the Levin Thunder. This is their opportunity to try and settle things down and control the puck. But uh, Wolves upsetting the apple cart here at the moment. You'll notice too, if you've just tuned into this broadcast, that there are now four players in the black and yellow team against three to the Wellington Wolves. That means they have a man advantage. They have one extra attacker on the floor. And they will try and move that puck around as much as possible to try and score a goal while they have that advantage. So you'll try and see them move it from player to player and try and get that um, the three unit moving around as much as possible to try and get a clear shot on net. We had a shot there on net, and that's cleared down. So you'll notice as well that this blue team, the Wellington Wolves, will try to send the puck all the way away from their own defending area to chew up or take away some of the time in the penalty. You may not be able to see the time on the penalty clock. However, the, the penalties are two minutes in length. And if they are scored on, then that player comes back out of the penalty box, and then it will be even four on four. Yeah, so they must be getting pretty close to going full strength here as we look at hitting the 10-minute mark in period one. Great save there as uh, one of the Thunder players was all alone in front. You see young, young Troy Brothwick here just for the Lither Thunder walking it in. Nice little pass. Oh, there you go. That's a goal for the Lither Thunder. Nice little play. Troy walked it in, set up the cross pass. And it is a goal to the Thunder. I think this is from Troy to Brooklyn. And boom. Goalie move. Too slow. And that's Troy Brothwick there on the screen. Nice little pass. Bang. One, two. Move the goalie. Goal. Back in at Lillian Thunder now. It's 2-1 to the Wellington Wolves. Here in the playoffs, the third and fourth in the senior division at this 2022 in line... Hockey Nationals here in Kirikiriawa. So this tournament, Todd, has been going on for the past nine days. And some of these teams have been here, probably if they have sons or daughters playing in the junior grades. Oh, great save there by the goalies. Gets the glove on it. With Lupin, number two there, is getting a good shot off. Um, yeah, so they may have been here for a number of days, and like this is the culmination of this event. So you are seeing the, the finals, finals, like the, the top end of the tournament the crowd is just starting to filter in because they've they've also had a long long week so it's uh, normally pretty ruckus in this building As people love watching their inline hockey here in get it yeah it's it's been a great nine days too and we started with what we call the festival of sport which is all our under 14 athletes so under 10 under 12 and under 14 starting the week off they had five days of hockey um, and fantastic hockey it was seeing the young, uh, young uh, children here playing inline hockey um, of all ages, all abilities, just having a good time with their, their mates, making friends and uh, lifetime friends in any sport, really. So it was, it was great to see. Um, and now we're into the, the business end with the, the big uh, boys and girls um, in the, the finals today. Yeah, so there are different grades too, aren't there, Todd? So this one here, oh, a great shot and a goal there by... Robertson, number 74. As we get to see here on the replay. Good puck movement as they're passing that puck around really well. He actually takes that puck really off the skates and then puts it to the stick and then shoots it really quick like a quick release shot. And the goalie didn't have a lot of time to react to it. And that was, again, barring in. Yeah, nice top corner shot. Yeah, there, as you're saying, and there is a lot of a lot of grades. So today we're uh, seeing the seniors on at the moment. So play off the third and fourth, and the senior final will be later on. Uh, so it's a senior division. So there is some uh, ladies that play in that. And then we will have uh, a Premier League, which is the top league. This you don't see too often either, as we get a player that's crashed directly into the goalie, and the goalie's kind of dislodged himself stuck in the net gets a little bit of help from the referees and back on his feet so a bit of an unusual moment there yeah so joe Dowman will go into the uh, penalty bin there for goalie interference just didn't stop in time so cannot interfere with the goalie cannot take them out um he just just misread that play so he took the goalie out so wellington walls on a penalty kill 
Yes, they have found themselves in the lead, but also in some penalty trouble as the referee uh, makes an indication. Crossing his hands over like that, that making an X symbol, that, that will indicate to the penalty score bench that it is a interference call, which we've already had two of those early on in this game. Yeah, it's been a lot of hockey. It's uh, only, what, well, we got six minutes left on the clock in the first half as the Wolves clear it down. Ben Thompson just to bring it back in for the uh, Levin Thunder. Off to Arden Phillips walking it in. Gets the shot off, goalie save. Yeah, also on those grades today, we're going to see the senior woman play as well and uh, a master's grade which is over 35 so look at this little shot from ben thompson easy one for the goalie as well set and our first final of the day will be at around uh 10 30 which is going to be the gold medal match for the under 16s which is uh, between the new plymouth ravens and the auckland panthers so that'll be our first final for the day yeah, please stick around to watch those. We can't wait to see the top teams going at it. This is the top inline hockey players in New Zealand representing their clubs from around the country. Yeah, and you definitely will notice a lot of difference between the under-16s, the seniors, the senior women, and the prince. There's lots of different styles out there. The under-16 uh, young guys and girls tend to go at a heck of a rate of knots. Um, they, they play with a real... Uh, fast pace the whole time, lots of energy. Yeah, that youthful, those youthful legs can really um, skate quite quickly. You'll notice that the, this grade here, the seniors, they tend to slow it down a little bit, a little bit more experienced. However, I mean, you see how quickly that shot gets released from the stick. When you put full force into it, that puck can be traveling up to 160 kilometers per hour. Yeah, yeah, they, they do have that competition in the NHL over in North America where who's got the fastest shot. And um, yeah, it is uh, quite good fun to try and uh, whack one of those pucks as hard as you can. Now, quite a bit of difference between inline hockey and ice hockey. So if you are watching a bit of ice hockey, um, the inline hockey puck is not as solid as the ice hockey puck. The ice hockey puck's a big solid rubber around mass. The inline puck's uh, plastic and it's uh, hollow, so it's not as um, solid, I suppose. Um, it is, you know, fairly solid, but and it still hurts. <laughs> yeah. But, yeah, it's a slight difference there. A little bit smaller. Yeah, you can't see it. We had a good shot there as the referee is dropping it. There are some ribbed uh, plastic pieces that are um, kind of raising the puck a little bit, so it does have some airflow underneath it. So it does travel quite smoothly on this sport court tile. And this is specially designed for this type of event, like this type of sport, whereas, obviously, ice hockey is played on ice. Yeah, and the other thing you might notice if, we, if you've watched ice hockey before, like in the uh, inline hockey, we've only got the halfway mark on the rink, the marking. We've got the circles, face-off dots uh, that you'll see at either end and in the middle. In ice hockey, they have a blue line um, inside each half, which is the offside for ice hockey. So no offsides in inline. So you see that puck moved around quite a bit and controlled backwards and forth. They don't need to worry about it, and the players are well spread out. And they play with one less player on in line. There's um, four against four on the floor at any time. And in the ice, they have the five against the five. So I guess those are the kind of main differences between the two sports. But both are very fast, very exciting. Get to have a lot of skill, a lot of agility, a lot of endurance, cardiovascular endurance as well to play this game. You'll see the players going on and off the floor. That's calling making changes or changes on the fly. So you're allowed to do that without a whistle. Um, there's no penalty or no um, nothing wrong with doing that. So if you do get tired, if you've been out there for a while, you're allowed to make a change. Shot and save sends away of the Levin Thunder down the rink. Two on two, though. Little centering pass didn't quite hit its mark. All right, full across to Ben Tom. Nick Tom. Yeah, another um, ex-New Zealand representative, Nick Tom. He's played this sport for a number of years. Uh, really starting to give back again. He's, he's been involved in the coaching for a number of years, organizing lots of different teams. 
In fact, we were hoping to catch up with him before the game, but he had to get out there for warm-up as we get into this bronze medal match. Currently being led by Nick Tom's Wellington Wolves, a, relative, a relatively new club, Todd, playing against a fairly well-established club in Levin, who used to be called the Jackals. That's right. Now yeah. called the Thunder. Yeah, Levin Thunder sporting a new jersey as well for this uh, this season, which is uh, pretty impressive. That that black and yellow jersey have updated their uh, their tops for the Nationals, which is pretty exciting to see. And Really exciting to see the note about this uh, Levin Thunder team at the moment. They've got a couple of really uh, young up-and-coming players in this senior side. So they've, you know, Troy uh, Brothwick there is one of the players who's still quite young but playing in the senior division. So great to see him out there. Zion Hurst as well, another up-and-coming young player. Oh, there's a tripping call. So the Wellington Wolves will go back onto a penny, penalty kill because Levin Thunder the power play again in the... They are d in the front, but uh, oh, he takes the hard. feet directly out from underneath the player. And no, no, you cannot do that. Yeah. As you see there, that is a tripping call. Pretty clear cut. Quite easy for the referee to make that decision, Todd. Yeah. Yeah, he definitely knew that player as well. He knew what he'd done. Straight to the penalty pit, yeah. feeling guilty. So they are leading not just on the scoreboard, but in the penalty count as well, Todd. So maybe they're trying to rack up wins in all categories here <laughs> who knows it's a way to start but their goalie's having a, a, a very good game so far five seconds left on the clock as we count it down that'll be the first half yeah that's sophie walker there in net for the um, wellington wolves yeah she's having a great game coached by nick tom so he's also a player coach so we're going to have a halftime break here. So thank you very much for joining us in this bronze medal match between the Wellington Wolves and the Levin Thunder. Be back again shortly. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. Yeah. This isn't about long distance calling. Technology. Or living overseas. Go ahead, one more bid. Thank you. We're going to go once. We're going twice. And we are sold to the Kiwi phone bidder from Manchester. <laughs> it's about Baileys finding buyers that others can't. Whoops, running on empty? Enjoy a six cents per litre fuel discount at your local Caltex with Pumped Every Day. Ah, feels good, eh? Get it at any participating Caltex. Fano and welcome back to the New Zealand Nationals down here in Kirikiroa, Aotearoa, New Zealand. The Wolves from Windy Wellington. They are up by two against the Levin Thunder. Yeah, what a great game to start with. 3-1. Uh, it's pretty, pretty tight. Uh, Wellington Wolves are going to start off on a penalty kill. I mean, Le Levin Thunder, the power play. So four versus three. Not the greatest way to start the second half in this playoff for third and fourth in the senior division. As we see the players come out onto the rink now, getting set. Underway now as Arden Phillips brings the puck up. Big shot, Sophie Walker saves. Quite a skillful play there by Arden Phillips. He was on his edges, as you see, like both skates being put in different directions. But he managed to hold on to it, the pocket, that is, and make a shot. That is a pretty difficult play to do while you're on wheels. Now time for them just to settle down. They've got two minutes. 
with this power play. So they use the time wisely, move the puck around as uh, Troy Brothwick winds it in. Oh, shot deflection. Just up and over. That might have gone off the goaltender's mask, Tom. Yeah, I think it yeah. did. Yeah. She put her face right into the shot. That's that's very brave to do. The yeah, goalies take a hammering, but they definitely put their body on the line to keep their team in the game. The goalie is the last line of defense there. Nice a little pass across, but well read. You'll see the team here in black, the Levin Thunder, electing to put a person directly in front of the net, trying to act as a screen so that they shield that puck or take away the goaltender's eyes as the top three move the puck around. Oh, they were closing the gap there. Nice, the Levin Thunder. Just a nice and patient. Oh, again, the goalie, Sophie Walker, read the play. Such quick across the crease. Well, when we refer to crease, I mean, that's the, the little flat line between the posts, basically. It's their uh, goal crease, their goal line. And the goaltenders, you'll see, will jump down or put a hand or uh, their glove on top of the puck, which will result in a, in a whistle, in which we're going to get a whistle here. That, that whistle is for something called a high stick. So anytime the, the puck is played above the shoulder area, and contacted with a stick, the referees will indicate that that is um, that's a little bit dangerous because that's up around the facial area. And you don't want to be hit by a stick in that in that space. I know I've been a victim of that, Todd, many many a <laughs> time. With a few few scars up there to prove it. So yeah, player safety is pretty important as we reset the play here. And that penalty is now finished, so we'll return to four players against four here, Todd. Yes, so Wellington Wolves just trying to control the puck. Levin Thunder have to do all the work here. They're behind by two. So they really need to sort of take control of this game. A little bit of patience, a shot on goal there, but well saved. Adam Foster to try and bring that puck up, just loses it in contact. Walk in shot. Wide. Wolves, really good sustained pressure there by the Wolves, and they're going to convert that to a goal. So they are rewarded again. So they have killed off all of their penalties, and then after they've killed off this last penalty, they've come back down and scored on the other end. Is that Jackson Baker? I think that scores that. Let's have a look. There's a run 88. Nice. Oh. Nice low hard shot. shot. I think that went um, what you'd call the five hole, which is that area in between the goalie's pads. You kind of number the spots as to where you can shoot it. Yeah. That was a quick low hard shot, and that goes in. Baker makes no mistake. So Thunder now really behind the eight ball. There. Three goals down, but we've got a plenty of hockey to go. It's three minutes in. Oh. Well, four minutes into the game, so 16 minutes left in this second and final half of the senior playoff for third and fourth here. Turnover again. Wellington Wolves back on attack. The Wolves can just control that puck a little bit here. They can take their time. They can, as long as they've got the puck, the other team can't score. So just looking around, back a goal back down to their half. Looks like they're going to try and get some changes there. Yeah. Thought better of it. Joe Dowman, the back pass. Now the Levin Thunder just trying to press a little bit. Good shot there by Lupin. Well saved, though by the goaltender Edwin. I'm sorry if I mispronounce your surname, Ed, Edmund, but it's uh, Quiros? Quiros. Yep, yep, that sounds about right. Oh, shot on goal. Sophie Walker again, really doing well to cut off, uh, like challenging the shooter, meaning she comes out of the goal crease area to really take away any good shooting angle that Ben Thompson had. So she really steps up here. She's got a great shot of it. She 
She's right on that high circle of her crease, her goalie crease. Cut down the angles. So if any of the, uh, you know, young inline hockey people are at home watching this, they've gone home, they've had their, their five days of festival sport playing inline hockey, they're probably at home watching TV right now, watching the, these uh, seniors and the premiers today and the, the senior woman thinking, oh, that's where I want to be. So, you know, take note of some of these players and uh, look at what they're doing, how they're skating around, how they're moving the puck. Nice and composed here. Wolves just hanging on to the puck. Nice little back pass. Baker there, Jackson Baker just behind his goal, using his goal as basically another person. The goal acts as a bit of a barrier. Gives you a couple options to go uh, both ways as we see a save down the other end. Yeah, there's multiple ways that you can um, try and keep the puck away from your opposition. One is just by using your actual speed and your skating ability. Uh, I guess if you're, you obviously have a stick in the sport, so you're like, oh, you want to keep that away from where the other people are trying to get the puck off of you. And you can use the barriers like the net, like Todd's mentioned, or even the players themselves. Yeah, so a good defender is going to stand in front of the puck, unfortunately, and, and take those shots. Uh, but look, like many sports, you know, that defender there is to, to block the shots on goal or interrupt that, that flow or that pass. And they do wear padding, folks. Like, this is not, they're not just out there skating without any protective equipment on. That would be a little bit foolish. Yeah, so most of the players, they uh, have these skates and then they have these really big heavy shin guards. So they, they wrap around the calf, um, go up all the way over the knee. They've got a hard plastic shell on them with uh, padding inside, quite a bit of padding inside. Hard to really make it out when you see them wearing their uh, pants and stuff, but they're under there and they are, they are quite solid. And then they have a, a thing called a girdle. So it's uh, some padding around the waist and, and they're all an important cut there as well. So they've got some padding up around the waist, the elbow pads. Uh, the nice padded gloves and that helmet. Normally a mouth guard as well if they don't have a full cage or visor. But when we're looking out there, so today when we see our under-16s and some of the players in this grade, a lot of our players, if they're under the age of 18, they must wear a full visor uh, to protect them. Once they're senior players, it's their choice whether they wear a half visor, which is uh, just covering their eyes, or the full cage. Great oh, shot, Troy yeah, Brothwick. You little legend. There you go. That'll uh, bring the game back with 11 minutes 30 got on the clock left. The young fella from Levin Thunder sets it alight. Now he's an up-and-coming player, so good yeah, to see to him. Watch. Yeah, yeah. You, you call that a slap shot, I guess. If any time you have your your stick up like this, as you see, streaking down that wing side, puts a stick way up, has a nice hard shot as the goalie is holding that close post but he elects to go to the other side and shoots and scores yeah definitely it was the call to go to the far side so so troy was shooting to the far side of the goal away from him sophie had the uh, post closest to him trying to cut off the angles which was the right thing to do um, but definitely had the nice sharp shot and went for the far post and by no means is any game ever over, even the scoreline having two goals ahead. You can score very quickly in this game, Todd. So this game is far from finished, even though we have 10 minutes left on the clock. As you see here, two great shots. Well saved by Sophie. As Thompson and Houston respectively get two shots on. And yeah, that's probably a good thing to mention as well. As we're final today, um, if it is within one point, so let's say we're 4-3 and we go inside the uh, two minutes. It's what we call stop clock. So that means the clock will stop at every play. So that two minutes does go on for a long time. So stop clock is, uh, you know, a, a good opportunity for each team to reset. But it does give that training team that's within one, um, you know, time to catch their breath and make sure they're ready to, you know, tie that game up. If it is a tied game today, we will go to a tiebreaker which that means it's a 10-minute um, half or period, and it is golden goal. If there is no goal in that 10-minute, it becomes a penalty shootout.
Yes, yeah, so that's that extra time if things aren't solved in regulation. And then we have a, that's a, a bit of a contact play there. That's kind of a body check, if you like to call it that, as Arden Phillips steps right in the pathway of, I think that's Lupin who's gone down. Um, and he will serve two minutes in the sin bin, or in the penalty box, as you'll see here. He comes up the wall and just separates the man from the puck. Yeah, nice. And you're not allowed to do that. Not a full check, but he uh, did use his upper body effectively to, uh, to stop that player. So, yep, boarding, interference. In ice hockey, that would be legal. That would be legal, yeah. yeah that's, that's definitely good. not an inline. The man that was hit is out there for the power play, looking to probably get some recompense or some, you know, bit of retribution. Yeah, so this is the first uh, power play for the Wellington Wolves. So it's their opportunity to actually go up by three if they can uh, convert here. I have seen over this tournament, though, Levin Thunder have played really well on the um, penalty kill. They've got a couple of really young, fresh legs out there, and, and they have done well. And we've seen a bit of, um, you know, some teams struggle to really mark the penalty kill when the, when the, the three players, as we say, so if the Thunder have the park, and now controlling the puck, a lot of teams struggle to sometimes mark three. You wouldn't think it would be an issue, but it, it does uh, pose some issues at times. So they are doing quite a relaxed power play here as they bring the puck up the floor. Matt Chan has it. Good passing there between Lupin and Chan. Just Chan, the puck ricocheted off of his stick. He didn't get it exactly where he wanted it in his kind of sweet spot. As Borthwick goes down a little bit as he skated hard to go and retrieve that puck. Great shot goal there is number 88. That's Jackson, Jackson Baker. That's yeah. the second of the of the uh, contest. Comes right down what we call Main Street, right down that middle area, and just shoots it as there's a bit of a screen here. Boom. Straight in that back of the net. Goalie's like, ah, couldn't see it, couldn't get it. A lot of net to shoot at. Great shot of the release there. Yeah, you see Jackson just a little move there too. He sort of looked like he was going to go right, but he, he brought the puck back and went left. This goalie might have just gone, oh, he's going to go right. I'm going to follow him and just body shift. So that, yeah, that takes us to a 5-2 scoreline, Todd, with the Wolves up by three. The last six, uh, six minutes, 44 seconds left. You can imagine uh, putting on all that goalie gear and trying to move quickly <laughs> across. Even though it's a small area, they're wearing a huge amount of weight and pads. And Nice save by Sophie Walker there. Yes, yeah, uh, Brooklyn Langdon Pautua was uh, in that crease area trying to get a goal for his team. And there's going to be a timeout call. The referee indicates that by putting a T-shape on the hands together. And that will be a 30 seconds break. It looks like the Levin Thunder want to have a bit of a cut it all with their group and get things back on track so they can try and claw their way back by three goals. Yeah, well, they do have, uh, you know, it's six minutes. They can pull that three back easy. It's, it's a lot of hockey happens um, in six minutes. It's, it's a, a pretty fast-paced game at times. You only need a couple of breaks, a couple of lucky shots, and, and you're right back in it real quick. that five-hole goal, is it, from Jackson uh, Baker there. One of his goals, Troy Brothwick bringing down. This will potentially be that slap shot when he goes far side. Bang! Far side around Sophie Walker. And that's the, the one where Troy went down, gave the overlap. Boom. Went right. Goalie went right. Shot went left. Great goal, that top corner. Yeah, so I guess as we have a break here, Todd, it'll be great to see... Um and thank our, our fans for coming to attendance to this, this game and also some of our sponsors that are here to uh, allow this event to take place. So we are gladly sponsored by the local Hockey Locker, one of the um, hockey shops down here in, in Kirikiriroa that uh, provide and supply a lot of the equipment that the players are wearing currently. Yeah, they do. That's, that's, it's great. So they've got a little store down here in the ring. And it, 
And I suppose when we're talking about that, it's, it's if you're in Hamilton or you're in the area, come down to uh, the online hockey rink um, today. Have a look, check it out. Um, you know, there's plenty of room, stands. There's even a coffee cart outside, which is good. And there's a little uh, yeah, shop inside trucks. the rink. Yeah. Mm. The other one to mention is Hockey Wise. Uh, there's another one of the sponsors here. So um, Hockey Wise do a lot of the, the coaching around the countryside for inline hockey um, and do a lot of work with the young uh, mokopona, the, the children, the kids. Um, so, yeah, fantastic to see them on board this year too. Yeah, aptly led by uh, Mrs. Tara Fox, um, a superb player, coach in her own right, giving back to the local community and to the country. I must say she's awesome with the kids. Like my boys have been to a couple of her, her camps, and they just they come back fizzing. They, you know, they, they really do love it. She does a great great job. Yeah, it really helps with that skill development, and a lot more than just skills. It's also the social side with this confidence and everything that goes with it. Yeah, that, that's a big thing. We we watch uh, this playoff the third and fourth year of the seniors uh, between the Levin Thunder and the Wellington Wolves at the moment, and it is a confidence thing out there. These kids, um, you know, you're playing against people all different ages and sizes um, and people develop at different speeds even in, in the younger age groups so it's great to see people out there um, doing it as we see the wolves and they're pumped you yeah. can see him doing a little bit of a chest celebration there as number 74 that's nick robertson i think he's also got two gets the pass from lupin here and unleashes a nice hard wrist shot have a look at this, and bang, and eyed it up, top corner. You see that goalie put the head down there, eh? It's, it's really hard work. you got to remember the goalie's the last line of defence. You've got four other players in front of you that do need to do some work. But it's 6-2 in the playoff, the third and fourth. Zach Bovey tries to get a shot off there. Rick Douglas pass back. Ben Thompson. But yeah, it is... Uh, Playoff the third and fourth now in the senior final here at the 2022 Night Hockey Nationals in Waikato. Hamilton, Kirikirioa. Thin Thunder trying to get themselves back in the game, but they've turned it over. Wolves in control of the puck. They're going to need a goal a minute here, Todd, if they're going to try and tie it up, which again is possible, as we've mentioned, but that's... Um Bit of a mountain to climb. Oh, there's a, trip, a cool. trip. There's Levin are earning themselves a power play. The Wellington Wolves a little bit undisciplined in this game, even though they're ahead by four. They're getting liberal. As here's the st the uh, the four checking pressure, and that's number 41. Joe Dowman, was it? Merrick right. Yanish Kiewitz. Yeah, that's a tricky one to pronounce. And again, we are um, amateur commentary <laughs> people here. So again, we do not know all of these players by first name, last name basis. So if we are mispronouncing anything, we apologize in advance. Oh, great shot save there by Walker, which gets that pad on it. This time they've got big Adam Foster doing the screen in front. Zion Hurst up front. Bothrops tries to get a shot off. So they've got two young boys out there. Two of the older guys, Adam Foster, Adam Phillips. They try and clean it up. Adam Phillips trying to battle the puck. Foster in there as well. Two on the puck carrier. Out to Zion Hurst. As he'll skate down the young legs. Two minutes 40 in this match. Bronze medal. Trying to make it a bit more of a respectable scoreline. Levin Thunder here. Troy Brothwick to bring it in. He's got a nice little shot on him. Oh, what a <laughs> shot. Nice little shot. That's a gorgeous shot as he snipes it upstairs. It's two for him. He's bar down and in again. Same Way side. Way to go, Troy. He likes that right side as he comes down. Oh. I think he has all three of their goals, actually. Oh, does he have all three? Oh, we'll have to double check that. He's, he's definitely been on the score sheet. As that. Wow, what a shot there, as you can see. Direct over that blocker side of Walker. So 6-3, playoff the third fourth. The Vin Thunder with all the work to do, but Wolves have got the puck. Looking to control the puck. The Vin Thunder here really need to, they'll be trying to put two on that puck carrier. So Wolves just dump it. Easier option. 
We are not within one, so we're not playing stop clock. So time uh, yeah. is ticking, 1.30 left. I'm a bit surprised that the goaltender, Guero's, decided to hold on yeah. to that. Usually, um, especially knowing that the, maybe they just he wanted to have the game end a little bit sooner than <laughs> than normal. Maybe. Yeah, normally you want to play it as quick as possible. You're behind on the scoreboard. It's a bit of a possession game now, like Levin have to chase the game and, and Wellington can really just hold on to it. Oh, and they score another no. one. What a deft touch shown there. Five hole on the goal. The goalie just had a little bit of gap in the between the pads. And Nick Tom does well to settle this puck down. It was sent from all the way down in the other end. Bouncing puck stops it. Just helps it in, guides it in yeah, between perfect. the legs. And, and that's it. You don't need a lot of weight on it. Just need to redirect that puck. Make some bake it. Redirect straight through the legs in the five hole. Seven three game. 30 seconds left on the clock. So winding the clock down now. Levin Thunder in can had the puck, trying to get another goal. Wolves will tie this up as much as they can. So Wellington Wolves, seven seconds left on the clock. Dumping the puck down long. The bronze medal is going to go to the Wellington Wolves in the senior men. Category here at the 2022 Inline Hockey Nationals. Big pats for the goalie there, Sophie Walker, from her teammates. Done a great job. The Vin Thunder will be gutted, but they played well and hard this tournament. So we've got our first, uh, well, we don't have a first medalist because we had the under 16s playoff this morning. So the under 16s playoff for third and fourth, that went to the Devils under 16 team. They took out the bronze this morning, uh, nice and early at 8 o'clock. But the senior men's uh, category, it will be the Wellington Wolves are going to take out the bronze medal. We'll see the teams shake hands. They uh, good mates off, hard battle. As we see the other teams starting to skate around and warm up, which is going to be the premier playoff for third and fourth. Hamilton Devils against the Auckland Panthers. So once again, if you are out and about in Hamilton today, please make sure you come on down, have a look, have a nosy at this fantastic sport. Check it out, even if you're coming down for a coffee. Come down to have a coffee in uh, the inline hockey rink. Check out some great hockey. We are here all day. All right, we're going to go downstairs now to Ian Watermaker, who's going to catch up with some of the players on the sideline. Ian. Kia ora whanau. Welcome back to the New Zealand inline national tournament down here in Kirikiriroa, Hamilton. Going to be joined momentarily by Wellington Wolves, one of their star players who had a goal in the matchup there as they just won the bronze medal. Um, from Wellington. Nick Tom, congratulations winning that bronze medal. That's got to feel pretty good. Uh, yeah, it does feel good. Really hard battle out there. Credit to the Thunder. They always bring it, and they did this time. Uh, we had a real tough battle with them all year. Uh, they managed to pip us in the region, so it feels pretty good to pip them at Nationals. Yeah, uh, so great goal at the end to finish things off. Nice deft touch you showed with backhand guiding that puck in the net. So well done on the bronze medal, and congratulations from, uh, from myself and all the crew here to, to wish your team well and looking great in those great uniforms. Cool, really appreciate it. First year for the Wolves, so uh, really happy to come home with a bronze medal. Excellent. And celebrate with your team, and um, thanks for being here. Cheers. Thank you. Awesome. We're going to welcome in um, one of the Hamilton Devils players currently playing for the Prem's bronze medal. So, Mr. Sanjay, if you want to come and join us. Kia ora, Sanjay. Um, welcome. And uh, how did you guys get here to this, this moment for the Hamilton Devils club? Oh, well, it's been a good tournament. Um, yeah, it's, there's been some tough fought games. There was a lot of um, games tied throughout the pool play, which um, which meant some interesting results. Um, unfortunately, we lost uh, in overtime last night. Yeah, in the semi. Well, I mean, that's kind of what you want as nationals are very tight contested contests, and um, hopefully you guys can get up here and get that get that bronze medal. Who are you playing against here for the bronze? Uh, so we've got the Mount Wellington Panthers. Yeah, it'll be a tough game. And like you say, it is what you want. You know, close games mean mean the grade is, is is coming together so yeah we'll give it our best shot well best of luck out there and uh, we'll get, get out there for warm-ups and get that bronze thanks Ian. cheers 
Awesome. We'll cut back up to Todd in the commentary booth, and uh, we'll bring you the live premier bronze medal matchup between third and fourth place teams. Awesome. Thank you very much, Ian. And uh, as we uh, see 50 seconds left to go, in this one, we'll have a look at the team okay. list here. Hamilton Devils. We've got Aaron Stockman, Hayden Stockman, Shane McLean, Sanjay Thacker, who we just saw there with Ian, Will Grover, Josh McMaster, Braden Kittle, JJ Mulo, Connor Robinson, Elliot Waghorn, Jeremy Ashton, Gareth Jones, uh, coaches Daniel Kittle, manager Tanya Redden. As we look at the Mount Wellington Panthers lineup, Scott Henry, Devin Stove, Dion McLean, Jacob Jackson, Max Hill, Max Vesper, Sid Sills, Scott Randall, Connor Park, coached by Clyde Jackson and managed by Angela Prendergast. That's how we're lining up. All right, we're going to go back down to Ian Wanamaker. He's going to catch up with Clyde Jackson, the coach of the Mount Wellington Panthers. Kia ora and welcome back. We've got one of the longtime servicemen of the inline hockey community here and also one of the coaches for the Mount Wellington Panthers. Welcome to you, Mr. Clyde Jackson. Thanks, Ian. Pleasure to be here. So um, can you tell us a bit about your club and how you got to this point in time in the national tournament? Well, we've, um, yeah, our well, club's been around since the start in 1996 and um, this team's been developing over a, well, probably 10 or 12 years since they were young children and playing against the Hamilton Devils and A's group. And so, yeah, we happen to meet here for third and fourth today. Awesome. So you, you've it, like, invested an enormous amount of time yourself playing, even when it was quad skates and yes. then becoming inline skates. Yes. And now you're seeing the Mokopuna and the, the, the Tamariki of this beautiful country coming up. Yep. So this has got to be somewhat rewarding for you to see in the nationals of New Zealand inline hockey. Yeah, well, it, it's a passion for not only when I was playing, but now coaching with my own sons playing and boys they grew up with. Um, it's very family orientated and it's, yeah, it's just a wonderful sport to play and it's, it's just exciting to be here. Excellent. Well, all the best in this bronze medal match and good luck to your team. Yep, thank you, Ian. Cheers very much. Thank you. Awesome. All right. So now we'll cut back up to Todd. We get this bronze medal matchup. This is the premier men's division. So I'm the best inline hockey you will see in the country. So stay tuned. Awesome. Thank you very much, Ian. And yes, indeed, this uh, premier division is the top category and it is exciting. So yeah, tune in. Check this out. This is fast paced hockey at its best and two of the, two of the best teams here in New Zealand playing off for the third and fourth Hamilton Devils, Mount Wellington Panthers. And, and great coach there, uh, Ian was catching out with uh, Clyde Jackson here. I have played with uh, a little bit of Clyde Jackson. Um, you know, he, he's been around the sport for a long time, has a lot to offer uh, with these uh, players as a coach, and he still gets around as a, a Masters or a, a Veterans player for New Zealand as well. So uh, good to see people like that still in the sport helping out. As uh, we see the Devils take control of the puck here, uh, as we open up, play off the third and fourth Devils coming down the rink. Just waiting for some options. Oh, early shot there on the goalie. Oh, just as we see a little bit of contact there with the goalie. Referee waved it off. Panthers are now in control of the puck. Looking to set something up. Devin, Devin Stove there walking down the rink. Nice and smooth and controlled here. A couple of shots just to test the waters to start with. Panthers in control. Down the wrench pass. Cross. Or oh, just sort of bobbled. The options were on there for a while. Devils cycle back. Down the rink go the Panthers. Goalie comes out of the crease. Nice glove save. Got to say here, while well, there is a uh, small stoppage in play, Rafano to you, uh, Mr. Velvin. I hear it's, yeah. uh, it's a bit of a celebratory occasion for you today. Yeah, it is. It's one of those days, uh, day of birth. <laughs> Another trip around the sun. Yep, that's it. Well, many happy returns to you, sir. And uh, what a great way to celebrate it here as we've got the New Zealand inline national tournament happening down here in Kirikiri Roa. You instantly notice a change in pace, Todd. Oh, you do. Straight away, yep. it, the, between the last game to this game, Premier men are just, they're lightning fast. Yeah, it is. It's, and it's controlled too. And uh, 
they know when to go forward, when to back it off, and uh, you'll, you'll see them have little sprints, but then they'll stop, reset the play. They're, they're looking to create options. Um, these goalies are, you know, world-class goalies, and it is hard to get that puck by them. So Panthers now around the back of their own goal, just looking for some options. You see a lot of aggressive uh, play, even with the sticks, to try and poke check that puck away, to regain that puck again. As you see here, Mount Wellington Panthers doing a great job of controlling that puck now and keeping it out of the stick length reach of the Hamilton Devils. Yeah, and you see, that's that's a play like at this level. They, they're not scared to come back all the way back to their own goal. They were behind the Devils' goal there. The Panthers were looking at and they put no options on, so they're going to come all the way back. They'll reset the play. Try and use that whole rink. Stretch the play. Stretch the players. Create the gaps on the rink. And back come the Panthers now. Back down to their own end. Just trying to reset. JJ Mulo there feeds off the middle. And again, this uh, Devils team actually has some young players in it. Like I see Braden Kittle there, Josh McMaster, JJ Mulo. You know, some of these guys are they're the future of the sport, definitely. They're, they're up and coming players. Well, I shouldn't really say they're up and coming. They are great players they're already. But they they're putting in the mahi. Like yeah, they've that, earned the, their place. Yeah. I think a couple of them can probably potentially. I think Braden Kittle may be able to play under 18 still, actually. I think. Oh, that's true, as he is yeah. eligible to play yeah. in that grade. Great Shot play there. Goal. That was very nice hand. hand and good maneuver there, as that's Max Vesper, another oh. multi sport code athlete, number 22 there on the Mount Wellington team. As you see here, he takes that defender on the outside, goes to his backhand for him, back to his backhand. That's lightning hands there. And goes oh, just over that goalie's pad. Yeah, goalie, goalie went to move for the pass, I think, and just didn't hold his post. So we, we do talk about goalies holding their posts quite often. Uh, they've got to try and you know, stop those little gaps, cut down the angles. So Panthers. Panthers go up by one. With four minutes gone on the clock as the puck gets tied up down below us here at... The inline hockey rink in Hamilton. Great shot and save there by Connor Parr. Although he is wearing a jersey that says Prendergrass. Maybe the only one that fits over top of that equipment. Yeah, maybe. Because that doesn't look like Ethan in the net. That seems to be Connor. Braden Kittle with silky hands. Just loses it in the last little bit, though. Goalie's got it tied up. And there will be another stop in the play there, Todd, as that shot was deflected out of play off of the goaltender's pads and went up and over the netting, the protective netting in behind the uh, boards area, so it will be reset to drop the puck. Oh, well read there. They were looking for the long stretch play. Pass down the rink. I was just wondering if we are going to break out into song just to have that uh, beautiful <laughs> rendition. I, I will not do that, folks. So definitely not do that on your ears with uh, my rendition of Rafana. That would be very unkind. But it is a celebratory day. Yeah. I mean, these guys are playing for bronze and the premier level for the men. Very, very narrowly missing out on getting into the finals. It was that tight. There was a three-way tie that Sanjay Thakka was referring to in the early interview before the match. Uh, th th these teams could hardly be separated. They had to go down not just to head-to-head, -head, but it was to goal differential. Yeah, so three teams, uh, three or four teams ended up on five points each. So yeah, yeah, we so that was the back. light Wanganui Lightning, and these two clubs here, the Devils and the Panthers. Yeah. I mean, that shows the shows the level of um, hockey, eh? Look at this level; it's, it's tied up. 
So the score here at the moment is one nothing to the Mount Wellington Panthers who play their inline hockey out of Auckland. Kind of in their inline rink right at the side of Mount Wellington. I think it, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, is it called Among I will have to get that checked, but uh, the Hamilton Devils down here, Kitty Kitty Doa, looking to get themselves equal in this game as they have a two on one here. Great pass across just out of the reach of Braden Kettle as Sam Hill does some good back checking, and now he's got that puck on his step. That pace of that game just ramped up real quick. Very light and agile on their feet. J Josh McMaster there. Still got the puck. Going into close contact. Nice little silky skills. Just, oh, still got it. Gets the shot away. Nice leg save there. Panthers now just try and calm things down a little bit. Looking for a couple of subs. So they're going to use their goalie. Devils are going to take the same opportunity. Quite often these teams do match lines, so they see the other line change. They'll try and do the same thing. Yeah, they want to get certain key matchups with uh, where they think or see there are any weaknesses. To try and take advantage of them, especially at this level when everything is so close. You want to have those little breaks in the game to try and open things up for your team. Yeah, we saw Jacob Jackson down uh, doing a nice little sprint there. And that is Clive Jackson, who Ian spoke to earlier. His son still playing great Premier Hockey. One of the families that have been around for a long time. Number eight is Jacob Jackson. Hard shot, but wide on the goal. Devils back in control. It's often a big risk too, eh, Todd, when if a player takes a hard shot like that and misses the goal, and then the other team regains possession, and they come down and try and score like this. Great save there by Connor Parr as McLean was looking to yeah. get one pass. Yeah, very calm. The goalie didn't move too much and just held their position well. Yeah, because they've got solid wooden boards around the rink, there's no outs or anything like that. So that puck, if it hits hard on those boards, it, the ricocheted out is, you know, you can end up setting the other team away. Good hard shot. Goalie glove save, but just drops it. JJ Mulo there with the hard shot. Stockman in there. Two brothers out there today for the Devils, which is Aaron and Hayden Stockman. That's another firm actually, because they had a sister that played as well. So, goalies uh, line line on the puck, killing killing the play. Great opportunity to sub and just calm things down, take a breath. Yeah, I think that's Jeremy Ash down the goalie for the Hamilton Devils. Does the kind of a splits there a little bit as he um, has both legs kind of extended down. As you see, he's lying flat on the on the floor. Trying to put his body in front of anything to stop that puck from going in. Yeah, and it, it, it's uh, hard work with those uh, legs. They call it a butterfly. And um, basically, your sort of knees are together. Oh, just missed. Great sort of read. Sort of came off the glove of the, the keeper there. Kind of par. But it is not an easy move for those goalies. Um, splaying your legs out like that in a funny angle. Devil's coming back down the rink now. Nice hard low shot by uh, Sanjay there, number seven from the Devils. Quite a deceptive play. He used the defenseman as a screen and took that shot. Often the goalies have a harder time tracking it when they're trying to focus directly on the puck and it comes in that quickly and you can't always see it clean. Yeah, we did see uh, the goalie for the Panthers, though, Connor. He was high in his crease. So as we look at the shot, he's still outside his circle. So he's cutting down those angles. He's high out in the crease. Makes the goal look a lot smaller for that person that's shooting. Jacob Jackson here with the puck now. Got a nice little speed he does. A nice little pass off. Oh, Good nice little button hook there. there, yeah. So in hockey, we tend to call that a button hook sometimes where they turn into the boards to, to change direction nice and quickly. Kettle with the puck. Nice little offload. Oh, great read, though, by the goalie. Big leg save there. Devils still got it. They've had a couple of opportunities there, just not quite converting.
Panthers back on attack. Shot wide. Did well to cut in front to get that angle, but then just missed. Again, really back and forth. So if you are new to watching this sport, it is very fast and it goes down to one end to the other extremely quickly. This is the premier men's bronze medal match between the Hamilton Devils and the Mount Wellington Panthers. Oh. Devils starting to crank up the pace a little bit. Starting to create some opportunities. It's time for a sub. Use the goal. Reset. So he just handed that puck off to his teammate behind the goal, and then he'll go and sub. Another kind of underrated um, statistic, I don't know if they keep a lot of these statistics, probably don't, is uh, block shots. As you see here, Sanjay cuts across, takes a shot. That's kind of redirected by the stick of the defender there from the Mount Wellington Panthers. Players often will try to get in the shooting lane to block that puck before it gets towards their goal. So literally anything to stop that puck from going in the net, that's what they will put in front of it. Yeah, definitely the job, that role of that defender, just to slow it down, block it off. So we've got seven minutes left in this first half of the Premier Men's playoff for third and fourth. Devils back in control of the puck, but they are one goal down. Create some options here. Stockman goes in hard into the boards. Kettle in there as well. Kettle comes away with the puck. So again, the crowd is building here in in, in Hamilton at Kitty Art. Oh, nice little move there, but very well defended by yep. Sam Hill. Didn't get the stick up too high. Oh, that will be a penalty though, as number yep. 77 looks like um, Robertson just got the stick up too much so and impeded the progress of the Mount Wellington Panther player. Yeah, so we'll see the referee signal interference there for that call. Yes, as Connor Robinson gets that stick up a little bit here, as you will see, the shot gets blocked, doesn't come through, and it just kind of holds on to him a little bit with his stick, which he can't do. Yeah. That's the first power play of this game. Yeah, so this is going to be interesting. What can the Devils do? Can they hold them out, or are the Panthers going to go two up? The Devils have just dumped it down the rink. Max Hill. Nice and calm now. They've got two minutes. Two minutes is a long time in hockey, so they can control this. They take their time. They can work some options. Got that one person parked in front of the goal. Devils very composed as well here in this penalty kill. Shot. High. Oh, nice pass and nice shot, but the goalie read it. Yeah, that's Ashtown. Sliding across, that's kind of going post to post. And he's a bigger goalkeeper as well, so already down, pushing across. Not sure if he uses those roller fly... Yep, roller flies, yeah. Um, inside of that pad so you can slide a little bit easier, whereas if you don't have those, making it going from one side of the air, a crease area to the other is real difficult. Too much friction, and it takes an awful lot of effort to move that quickly. 
Yes, as we've talked about the puck already, the puck has little, uh, like these little um, dimples on it to help it slide on this uh, sports tile. So different to ice, so the, the pads don't slide like you see the ice hockey uh, goalies slide across the ring. So they've got a little uh, plastic artificial attachment to the goalie pads with these little balls on it called roller flies. Yep, you can see them attached there. Just helps them slide across that goal and that crease. Otherwise, the pads would be uh, yeah, sticking to the floor and they'd have to shuffle. So it gives them a bit more momentum. Most goalies in New Zealand do have them at this it is an optional thing, though. They don't, they don't, the pads don't come with it because they are uh, built for ice hockey as well. All right. I think, uh, is it that they're Velcroed on, Todd, or yeah. somehow put onto the... Yeah, Yeah, just Velcroed on. They wrap around the uh, some of the side padding. Those, those goalie pads have got a heap of padding on the inside of the knee as well as in front. So when you see the goalie dropping like that, they're uh, actually down on the uh, inside of those pads so great shot of this replay is a bit of a breakaway Matt Wellington player gets in behind but uh, Ashdown does well to close that five hole not letting that puck through at all and as expected this game is two minutes left in the first period to go and it is only one goal in it it is tight as we see the Devils there just a nice little sneaky backhand McLean does well to fight through that check of the Panthers player looking for a penalty call. Gets the backhand away. Spinorama looking for a penalty, but referee says, no, no, that's all fine and clean. Let's play on. Oh, Ooh. deflection there. Yeah, that was off a Panthers skate too. That is not good for the goalie. They have to read that pretty well because the puck changes direction so quick. Kittle with the puck. Yeah. Nice little one-two there. Testing that goalie. McMaster to take it out. Oh, he tried the between the legs move, didn't come off. It looks good when it works, but when it doesn't, yep. that puck goes down the other way pretty quickly. Jacob Jackson here to take the puck out for the Panthers as we see some quick subs here. Just looking for some runners. Great play there, Todd, with the, the backhand. Faking the shot, the goalie has to respect the shot from any shooter, but then they had the person that was called backdoor on the other side of the crease, wide open, and that's who is successful in putting that puck into the net here as Mount Wellington go up again. Backhand pass by Vesper, finds that streaking Jackson. That's a very difficult save for Ashdown to make because you've got to respect it, goes to the backhand, quick pass across to Jackson, makes no mistake, that's in. Nice little tap in there. It was so, so lightning quick, and it was a little bit of off a turnover as well. We see the physicality ramp up a little bit there, so there will be a chicken call against. Uh, Looks like Devils McLean players. might be going. It's a little bit of frustration coming through in that yeah, in there this is. bronze medal match. He's wanted a call earlier in the game, didn't quite get it. Now he's penalized for body checking. Yep. So you'll see the referee, he put his fist into his hand that means it is a boarding call so body checking or boarding so you're putting that player onto the boards so now what will happen Todd is we've got a two minute break in between and then that it will signify that we're going to take a short break and come back yeah there we go we'll uh, join us soon and uh, stay tuned in Yakita. It's about better results with over 90 offices right across the country in residential, commercial, and rural. No time to fluff around today? No worries. Just swing into Caltex and pay for fuel with Pay and App to speed on through. Oh, yeah. 
feels good. Use it at your local participating Caltex. And welcome back to the 2022 Inline Hockey Nationals here in Kirikiria, Waikato, Hamilton, New Zealand. We're in the playoff for the third and fourth in the Premier Division between the Mount Wellington Panthers and the Hamilton Devils. A couple of, couple of highlights there, nice little goal there, the first goal for the Panthers. It is 2-0. Second one here, a nice little fast pass to cross and redirect by uh, Jacob Jackson there to beat the goalie, go around that goalie to give the Panthers a 2-0 lead over the Devils. Play off the third and fourth here as we're about ready to get underway in the second half of this game between the Mount Wellington Panthers and the Hamilton Devils. Here we go. Power play time for the Mount Wellington team as they have four players on to the three for the Hamilton Devils. So we'll see how they go to work here as they move that puck around. Yeah, nice and controlled to start with. Looking for some options. One-timer. Well read by the goalie. Passing options through the gap, out to Vespa. Back out the high point, cross. The idea of this is uh, if it's past the stick, they don't need to uh, move too much. They can just one-timer it, which is basically means that it hits the stick and they fire it off straight away. But if they have to reach or move or you know change body positions, it slows it down. It gives it opportune time for the goalie to reset or the defenders to you know close that gap. Oh, nice little try and redirect in the front, but went a little bit wide. Max Vespa behind the goal here, just trying to move the D. Oh, no, oh. This players battle for the puck, using their sticks a little bit liberally just to try and lift it to get possession of that puck again. And that's what uh, Robertson's trying to do there against Vespa to get that puck back, get it out of harm's way. Stockman to clear the puck out to his brother, just dump it down long the Devils do not want to go one more goal down here, they want to try and keep this out shot, a little bit of a glove to it there four on now, back to full strength just backing out of the shot there they want to keep control of the puck, keep possession gives an opportunity time for them to sub so McLean's bringing the puck back. Yeah, they get their penalty off the killers off as well, Todd, so they can get uh, the matchups they want, get their offensive players out on, onto the floor. As they are down at the moment by two goals, that next goal is crucial for both teams. Yeah, and it, and it may not look like they're doing much in that penalty kill um, with those three players, but it is hard work. Little quick shot wide of the goal. Good stick by McMaster as Jackson had another opportune placement directly in front of the goal. Wasn't able to get it through. Oh, no, unfortunately, Ashdown did really well to stop that puck, Todd, but then it deflected by himself back into his own goal. He's not going to be happy. Unless we have another look at this. He has shaken his head. He skated away from the goal. He went to bat it away. Nice hard wrist shot. He hits it up off his stick, off his blocker, and it goes directly into his own goal. 
And the way Connor Parr is playing in that other end, they're going to be tough to get anything past him. And that was a little bit of a gift. That was a bit of a gift. A bit Sometimes. of an early present there, Todd. I don't know if that's something that you're after. Did you get any presents today? Did you get any acknowledgement? Or yeah, I yeah, yeah. had a few, few uh, good wishes, birthday wishes and stuff. As you do, phone's gone a little bit crazy this morning. I've had my morning coffee, I'm happy. Oh, and a goal. The Devils do not count them out. McLean, fresh out of the penalty box. Number 18 for the Devils. Goes up above the glove of Parr. Taking this game to a 3-1 scoreline. We just talked about that goal. We might have put the commentator curse on and uh, Connor Parr here. Look at that. Nice top right. Oh, just a lot of it. Goalie move too. Opened up the space. Didn't hold the post. And he's coming down that right side. Just goes, yep. cuts in towards the middle. Gives himself more net to shoot at. And he doesn't make any mistake. Putting it right upstairs. Meaning the upper portion of the net. There's some of these weird expressions you may hear us say that... Um, may not make any sense or have a weird reference to them. Often it's just ingrained in, in us. As break here for Scott Henry, streaks down, shot. What nice a save, save by Ashdown. As it was 1-0 on oh against the goalie. And Henry can really shoot that puck. That's Kittle now for uh, the Devils, just looking to slow things down. So you see that pace change so dramatically, like they Light it up, then right, we'll calm it down. Let's just sort of create some options here. Kittle with the puck looking to dump it down into the corner. Gonna be back, turn over back to the Panthers now. Just under 15 minutes left in the second and final quarter or half for the playoff of 34th and Premier Men's Division. Good battle going on here in the boards. Devils walk away. Josh McMaster's going up the ring. Gets the pass off to his mate, Kittle. Oh, oh Braden Kittle. One of the Panthers went down. Tripped over himself. Opened up the door for Braden Kittle, and he's not going to miss with an opportunity like that. Yeah, one of those very dangerous players, Braden Kettle, where you can have any space and time, he is going to make you pay for it. As you see here, as the Panthers kind of run oh, into one another, gives him that opportunity and going again, glove side yeah. on par. They're figuring it out pretty quick, but it looks like the two Panthers players collided. Put Jackson down, opened up that slot for Kettle. So that's a 3-2 game to the Mount Wellington Panthers now. So they're back in it just like that in the space of a couple of minutes. The Devils are on the charge in this playoff for third and fourth. 13 on the clock to go. Definitely wanted to give their hometown fans a little bit more to cheer on. They may be a little bit disappointed they're not in that final, but as we mentioned, how close it has been in this premier men's division, showcasing the top talent here in New Zealand. Oh, as Aaron Stockman could have just lost the handle on the puck a little bit, and then he got it again, but missed the goal. McLean gets it back. Shot, and there will be a penalty really? here. As the referee's indicating hooking, there will it? be something, yeah, and it is a, a hooking, hooking call. Hooking call. Yeah. So the hooking call, that's the referee puts his arms out in front of him and pulls them back in towards him, indicating the player has hooked. Have a look yet. So there it is. Is up the, the stick, the right Rako. On the, right on the hands. Up around the hands. So dangerous territory for the Mount Wellington Panthers, flirting with a bit of disaster here as you've got 3-2 uh, scoreline, 12 minutes remaining in this game, and two-minute penalty to Mount Wellington. And this is on, this is on. So this is, uh, this is how the day is going to be. It is going to be close games, hard battles. As we uh, talked about at the start of this game, these teams could not be separated. They had to go to count back for them to make the finals. So first and second, third and fourth, all back on count back because they were tight, close games. And we're in for it again today. So they offer third and fourth, Premier Division, Hamilton Devils, Mount Wellington Panthers.
Kittle controlling the puck there. Off to his mate. Back to Kittle. Just didn't quite get the puck on the stick. Has a little shot, a little wide. Looking to control it here. They'll try and... Oh, referee. He's it. Back out to Kittle, though. Oh, didn't quite connect there. Bit of a swing and a miss, they that, call that. Yeah, but you, you're right with how you've described that one-time shot. We haven't seen very many of those tonight. Uh, today, I should say. It's not tonight yet. This is going to be a long day, but your, your birthday. Uh, passing that puck and having it hit right away, not allowing it to stop. Off the pads, goalie pads. Back out to Kittle. They are testing uh, Connor Parr down there, though. He's well set, though. Oh, oh, and they score another one to tie it up was on the backhand. <laughs> Where did that go in? Bit of an innocent, again, it was not a hard shot by Sanjay. Sanjay. Beautiful It doesn't have to be hard to go in, and he, he buries that one. Oh. Looked like it might have gone into that five-hole position in that butterfly between the pads. We'll deep, see here. deep to Sanjay there. He's alongside the goal. Wow. Yeah, it does go five. It looked like yeah. he mishit it as well. Kind of came deep. off the bottom of the blade. He's oh, it goes far side off the post. Yeah. Bar, bouncing puck. Wow. Three all game. Ten minutes left. Time out. What a, what a great little play. And that was just out of really nothing. From that behind that goal, a little wraparound. Goalie was set well too. Had it covered, but far side. So a bit of a reset here from the Panthers. They um, call it a timeout play. As you see, McLean passes it down low. And Sanjay kind of just... Puts the backhand on top of the puck and it rolls over and it literally bounces, hits the goalpost and goes into the net. I guess it doesn't matter how it goes in. As long as it, it goes, goes in. in. Yeah, through all games. So just a good opportunity to shout out to our sponsors again. Uh, Makata Māori for this lovely broadcast. Hockey Locker, Hockey Wise, Caltex, Pure Athletic, New Zealand Carbon Farming, Apollo Projects, and Bailey's Real Estate. It's what makes our sport across New Zealand and the, for our inline hockey. Afano, thank you very much for coming and helping us out to put on these national champs. Everybody's had a great week so far, and it's going to finish with bang today. You are not wrong, Todd. It's uh, with great pleasure we have the great support that we do, and it is an amateur sport in this country. So, again, if you are watching, we do thank you for tuning into this broadcast that is being put on beautifully yeah by Fakata Māori it's uh, it's a wonderful event and and this is just highlighting putting the skill that is on offer on display Panthers straight on attack there little shot but saved by the goalie little tussle in behind the nets now the plane to bring it out showing a bit of turn of pace he's got one of his mates down long Oh, looking for a redirect, like a deflection, possibly, as McLean, very determined, coming up the rink, puts a feeder pass into the middle of the uh, the rink there, and doesn't quite connect with his his line mate. Nice hard low pass towards Robertson. Yeah, goalie had it nice and saved, nice and ready as well. Stayed good position. Caught on the crease. Max Vesper around. Oh, it doesn't quite connect. With Dion. Oh, diving play by McLean, sensing that there was danger on that other side of the net with Josh Stove waiting for that pass. Does well to get in that, sh that passing lane as Devils break back with Stockman coming through. That's Hayden. Sends it over. Puck is deflected by Hill. Hill getting in that defensive position again and turning over the puck quite well. Shot but high. Yeah, I think you'll find that uh, Devon stove out there. I know Josh oh, is Devin, here. Excuse yeah. me, I do yeah, apologize. Yeah, another great hockey family. Uh, Josh is in town though, watching. Uh, He's, he's home for a little holiday from uh, America. I think he's living there, playing over there, potentially for ice. That's possibly why I would have got that confused, Todd, coming from that ice hockey background and the, and the NZHL finals that just been recently played. 
the Sky City Stampede been crowned a record-breaking seventh championship yeah. trophy. Over some of the uh, West Auckland players who play for the Mount Wellington Panthers. Scott oh. Henry and Max Westbrook. Great move here. Puck's still oh. free. Panthers come away, though, trying to get clear it out of their zone. Josh McMaster to take it up. Has ramped up a little bit here as we've got just under eight minutes on the clock to go. Second half. This playoff for third and fourth. Yeah, the game is tied. Three goals to three. So if it stays like this, and we get inside that two minutes, as mentioned before, we will go to stop clock. So every time the play stops, or well, pass might have been a bit weak there, it's going to be intercepted. Not quite a clean pass. Devils dump it down. Go for a couple of quick changes. Fresh legs. Key to have that fresh legs out here at the pace they play. Need those fresh legs. Yeah, you will see they have players on the benches. Usually they have an extra six, maybe seven players, while four of them are on the floor, and they rotate through regularly throughout the game. Shot on goal, but nice save by Connor Parr there. Yeah, as you you mentioned there, Todd, that uh, the clock does still tick down, even though it is a tied game, up until that last two minutes of play. So whenever that puck is on the floor, it's continuous play. It does not stop. Yeah, much. Uh, it's a bit different to other sports like that, where if the ball goes out, there is no outs. Just keep playing. Run those legs. Devils bringing it down, looking to create some options. Shot on goal, nice save. As Connor Parr flashes that leather glove this time, the Devils go elect to go back to that glove side of Parr as he has given up two on that side already. And through the screen, Connor is able to see that puck and glove it down. Devils in control there, just resetting a little bit, bring it up to halfway. Kittle to walk it in, passes it back off. Just cycling around, nice. Kittle's going to fire a shot, high and wide though. Got the puck back in front, Josh McMaster. Not quite there. Well, I guess here, there's an example, Todd, is the puck does go out of the rink. And that will create a stoppage. That doesn't happen again often. But when they puck is shot that hard and that fast, it looked like it was deflection off of Max Vesper's stick, and it went up and over the netting. Last five minutes here. Bronze medal match. Great shot there, and saved well by Ashdown. Goaltenders being tested both ends of this rink. Stockman's away. Got one of his teammates with him, but back chased by Jackson. Showed some wheels. Panthers turn it over. Now looking to slow things down a little bit, reset, calm things down. Panthers trying to gain control of the puck. Devils battling hard. Looking for the redirect there. Not quite on. Both teams searching hard now. They're searching for that goal to go up one up. Off the glove of the goalie, Ashdown. Very good shot again by Vesper. Testing both sides of the goalie, blocker and glove. Out front. Oh, what a stick lift there by Stockman coming back in desperation to stop Vesper. Oh, as he lays in a big body check on Vesper. That is not allowed as Vesper, Vesper goes down. The referee's hand is up for a penalty. Delayed penalty call. So the, the Panthers have pulled their goaltender here as Vesper's favoring that right shoulder side. Hopefully that's okay. Yeah, it was a big, big shot. We'll have a look at that on the replay. But he is hurting Max Vesper. His shoulder 
holding his shoulder. So now, Mount Wellington Panthers, the referee's still got his arm up for the call here, but Mount Wellington Panthers have pulled the goalie. So they've got five on, so it's a five on four. So they're just going to control it. Shot on goal. Panthers still have it. So for the whistle to blow, the Devils have to get the puck. And then it'll go to a penalty kill. Here the referee. So there's an elbowing call. It was kind of a, a, a contact that he makes with Vesper. Vesper gets the puck here, comes into the middle to take a shot. Just gets nudged off the puck. Well, more than a nudge, that's a big contact. That's a, yeah, that's a big contact. But yeah. Stockman is doing his defensive job, holding his ground here. And you get a lot of the look at it. You just see Vesper on the ground, favoring that shoulder. Hopefully it's not out of its, its socket or no AC joint injuries. Often hockey players do suffer from those collarbones. A lot of contact in that area. So Devils had the puck there. Just didn't quite get the hard enough pass to control the puck, but they've got young legs out there, McMaster and Kittle. And Sanjay's out there as well. Power play, Mount Wellington. 1.53 on the clock. 3 all. This could change the game. Another save made by Ashdown. Some yeah. critical moments here. Devils got the puck. They're going to try and wind the clock down. Kittle's got it. Devils just playing a really aggressive penalty kill here. Doing yeah. great. Oh, another. That's a high hit as well. Yep. The referee's let that go, though. Fills in the stove on the sideboards. Great right. shot, save by Ashdown. Oh, good stick harassment. Kittle's away. He does have a shot on him. 50 inside a minute here. What can Mount Wellington Panthers do with the extra man on the rink? Walks it in, passes across, not connecting with the stick. Still in control of the puck, though. Oh, what redirect and miss. Save. Redirect and miss. Puck's out front. Watch the big shot. Oh, and another hit by McLean onto Hill as they come away. 2 on 0. No penalty. And Thacker's away. Desperation oh. defending as he's chopped down. No call. 4 on 4. 20 seconds to go. Is it going to go to overtime? for our first playoff in the men's premier division. That's it. That's going to be game. That is going to do it for regulation time here, Todd. That is now equal with the scoreline 3-3 three to three heading into overtime. We might uh, have to shoot for a quick little break and come right back for the 10 minutes of overtime. Stay tuned. Found the place. That's a good start. Built by my great grandfather.
no time to fluff around today? No worries. Just swing into Caltex and pay for fuel with Pay and App to speed on through. Oh yeah. Feels good. Use it at your local participating Caltex. Kia ora whanau. We are back to the New Zealand Inline Hockey Championships. We're about to head to overtime here, Todd, between the Premier Men's Division Bronze Final. Mount Wellington Panthers against the Hamilton Devils. Yeah, what a way to, uh, you know, kick off the day. We've had a couple of close matches, and as we've lead it into this game, these teams were very hard to be separated uh, going into these playoff rounds, and it is reflected in this game now. At 3 all, 10 minutes, golden goal, Mount Wellington, Panthers, Hamilton Devils here in Kirikiriyawa. Panthers win the face-off. Back around. Sprinting down the rink. Nice little shot pass. Wide shot, though, but Panthers are still in control of the puck. Looking to end it early, yeah, aren't they, the Panthers, as they're starting off real fast. Shot. Oh, just missing up in that top corner. Yeah, they have started quick. The Devils have sort of been a little bit caught napping there. Yeah, letting that player walk down Main Street or down, down straight to the middle is not a good a thing. There's some multiple shooting options. As you see those subs, we've played 40 seconds and these subs happening already. That's the pace that these uh, guys are skating at. And you did see Vesper out there in the early sequence of this overtime. So hopefully uh, it looks like he's recovered from that Stockman hit earlier in the game. Yeah, he'll be one wanting one. to play. I was going to catch that. That was coming directly up into the commentary box here. Um, and this nicely newly built section of the inline rink, must say, it's looking very sharp. They've got a beautiful trophy cabinet, um, a nice kind of lounge area that you can kind of sit in, maybe conduct any meetings that you need to. Yeah, they do so. The, the, the community around uh, Hamilton have done a fantastic job. Uh, a lot of local sponsors, they've upgraded the rink. They've got a little party room downstairs you can rent. Um, you know, a little conference room upstairs here. So. It's, it's, a, it's a great facility. And are they going to be rewarded here with their players' efforts for the bronze medal as Stockman looking to center it, but it's blocked by Jackson. Jackson is playing out of his skin there. They're not out of it yet here. Real big battles going on here. Uh, the way this is going, we're bound to see a penalty at some stage. But, oh, I missed the shot. It was on as well. Just a swing and a miss. Looking for the redirect, the Devils. Devils on that counterattack now. They are pushing the pace. So it is, again, back and forth. Tightly contested contest here. Oh, and a giveaway and a trip. Oh, oh in overtime. This could be a penalty shot, Todd. Will it be? Let's see what the referee it's signals. Called. Looks like it's going to be just a tripping, but he's checking with the other referee. Shall we go for a penalty shot or not? Stockman's going to the penalty box. The referees confer. This could decide the whole match here if it is decided by either a penalty shot or are they going to elect to just have a two-minute penalty. Stockman was down and gave away the puck and then decided out of desperation to trip up his man. So why, why are they thinking about penalty shot on this is because basically there was no one in front of the player. So that would have been the consideration. It's was a goal-scoring opportunity. You yep. think that that's a, yep. a clear opportunity to get a penalty shot, but in overtime right now they've elected penalty. So the Panthers have a man advantage. This is huge for overtime situation. With the game on the line. And that's just sometimes sport. You just brain explosion maybe with waving the stick around at the feet. Cannot do that. Ill afford a penalty in overtime. Well, goal and goal. you'll see, I guess, if Panthers don't score, Stockman could be rewarded, I guess, for yeah. that desperation play that he made. Choosing the option of taking the man down instead of going 1-0 on against the goalie. At least this way you have a 3 against 4 
for two minutes or less. And that's it. They have won it. Mount Wellington shoot to score, and it was taking a deflection on the way in. Stockman will not be pleased. The Devils unsuccessful here. Yeah, so they will be not happy. Panthers are over the moon at the moment. So in our first premier game, third and fourth, Mount Wellington Panthers take out that bronze medal. Hamilton Devils in third. So again, if you are and about as we see the crowds build, we're about to start into our gold medal matches very, very shortly. So once the formalities have been done for this game, we will be into our first gold medal match, which will be the under 16 grade, which is going to be between the Panthers and the Ravens. Teams will be disappointed, but what a great game. Very, very hard game. Just hearing a bit of noise from the crowd, cheering on the under-16s as they just do their warm-up. A little bit of skate round. They'll have an opportunity to warm up their goalies and so forth. But before then, we will be looking uh, to cross back down to the sidelines very, very shortly. Just waiting for Ian to make his way down the stairs out to the sideline of the rink. As we see our two referees get a, a much well-deserved rest. Here the firing of pucks around there as the 16 start. Pepper and goalies and, and, and getting used to the, the surface again. For what is going to be an exciting matchup in the 16s final. And this is um, men and women. So we're going to cross now right down to the sidelines. Ian Wanamaker is down there with some of the other teams. Ian, over to you. I mean, the Hamilton Devils, a local club here, and the uh, Mount Wellington Panthers. And I'm going to moment, I'm going to bring in um, Aaron Stockman. He is one of the assistant captains on the Hamilton Devils. Mate, what a game. Uh, going to overtime couldn't have been any closer. I know you guys are gutted right now, but uh, give us your thoughts to manage to get here, to put yourself into this position. Yeah, pretty pretty proud of the boys. Like, we set out from the start of the year. to have a goal to uh, take our national title this year at home, but um, we, we put the work in. I know we did that. Just a little clinical finishing touches weren't there, so there's always stuff to work on. But pretty gutted for the boys, but also really proud of the way they dug deep and um, we got some good results this year and uh, we put people on notice which which was a, a positive for us oh absolutely you got to be super proud of the mahi you guys have put in not much separating and going into overtime you got to be prouder i mean you'll come back again next year and look forward to tightening things up but um well done sir and uh, congratulations on a great national tournament yeah thanks guys and um thanks to everyone who's put the tournament on a lot of hard work's gone into getting the rink looking like this and um just everybody volunteering their time. It's great to see COVID, um, you know, hockey's making a comeback after COVID. So if you're interested, get down here, have a crack at it. It's a fantastic sport. And, um, yeah, we really love it. Even even when it's hard to take, we, we still love playing. So, yeah, appreciate it. Uh, well done. Thank you, Mr. Stockman. Thank you. Uh, awesome. Yeah. Go ahead. Uh, there great words of wisdom there. It's great to hear um, some encouraging words to get anybody involved in this great sport. We're going to welcome in uh, Mr. Scott Henry from the bronze medal winning Mount Wellington Panthers. Scott, going into overtime, not much separating your two teams or a lot of the Prem teams. What are your thoughts on that game? Uh, yeah, it was, it was as hard fought for both teams. I think it was a good battle. It was just a, a good showcase for the sport. Um, pretty evenly matched. Could have gone either way, but uh, pretty happy to come out with the result. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, it's, it's kind of all, not much else to say, to be honest. Like, uh, you, you dictated w how you wanted to say things by your play and, and putting the hard work in the mahi, like getting an overtime victory to get a bronze medal. It's got to feel pretty good for that Matt Wellington Panthers team. Uh, yeah, it definitely feels good. I feel like we've been, uh, we've been building all year to try and, uh, try and get to the state and obviously try and get a medal and uh, a good placement. And I think we posed ourselves well in that game and, uh, and just hard-fought battle and we got the result, which was um, just due to hard work.
Yeah, so congratulations. Go and uh, celebrate with your team. Uh, great Nationals tournament, uh, and we congratulate Matt Wellington on a bronze medal win. Awesome. Thank you very much. Cheers for coming out. Awesome. Excellent. Thank you very much, Scott. It was great to, to hear from from him and, and the Matt Wellington Panthers team. We're going um, gonna to be going to the under-16 gold medal matchup right now between the New Plymouth Ravens and the Mount Wellington Panthers. So we're going to have uh, one of the coaches join us here is uh, Mr. Ant Nathan. Uh, kia ora, Ant. Uh, going to get your thoughts on your, your team. Kia ora, mate. Um, Go. So how did your team get here? This is the gold medal 16 and under yeah. finals for Nationals. Um, we, to be fair, we made we went the hard road. We had two sort of games that we didn't lose, but we didn't play our best. So um, we've made it through to all this, but we're still waiting to get to our best. So hopefully today we can play um, the best hockey we can and, and show that why we should be should be here. Yeah, exactly. Well, you've deserved this spot. Like, you guys, your team has worked exceptionally hard. Noticeably, you've been putting in the mahi and the effort. Yeah. Loss of voice for the whole that. Yeah, and, and, I mean, you're, you're on the bench. You're dictating how the game should go to your team. So yeah. any words of wisdom before the gold medal? Um, just leave, empty the tank. Take one shift at a time and just sort of go out there. Keep it basic. Yeah, but yeah that's, that's about it. I gotta, can't say too much. I've got to save it for the rest of the, rest of the yelling of the, of the game. All right, well, best of luck in the gold Thank medal you. match. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, thanks, mate. Awesome. And um, next, we're going to be joined by Mr. Gary Toa, coach of the New Plymouth Ravens. So, kia ora, Gary. It's great to see you here again and um, giving you uh, your service back to the game and being rewarded with a gold medal match here with your 16s. How does that feel? Uh, it feels good, yeah. Kids are, uh, are ready for this. Uh, put the training in at, at, at the rink at home and um, to come up here and make their gold medal match is, uh, is bloody awesome. But, uh, yeah, really looking forward to the game. We had a good game with the Panthers in the first round. And uh, hopefully this will be another good firecracker. Oh, absolutely. A gold medal match at Nationals. I mean, you've got to be fizzing just to get your team out there and uh, give, them, give them the best opportunity. So um, all the best in this gold medal match. And hopefully we'll be talking to you afterwards with a gold medal. Cheers. Thanks, Ian. Looking awesome. forward to it. Good man. Excellent. All right, we're going to cut back up live to uh, Todd Belvin and myself. We're going to commentate the gold medal match here. 16s in action. Yeah, thanks very much, Ian, and great to see the likes of uh, Gary Tower and, and Nathan, um, two uh, stalwarts that have been involved in the New Zealand Māori team for a long time as well. The first shot on goal from the Panthers, but is goes wide here. Oh, that'll be an early penalty there, tripping uh, on Max Tower from the Ravens, 91. Just hooked his stick in behind. So have a quick look at the team list here. So the Mount Wellington uh, Panthers team, Justine. Um, Lena Wimu, Gigi uh, Nasahakawa, Josh Christus, Burr, Yvonne Tasai, Jojo Wang, Connor Olsen Carsons, and Montel Marjorie Banks. As the uh, Ravens try and kill the puck a little bit, as I look at their list on the, we've got Hugo Roy, Toby Webb, Max Tyre, Caleb Scott, Flint Roderick, Kate Henry. Fletcher Downer, Ross Penwarden, Quinn Henson, Robin Thorpe, Sam Plant, Shanae Cameron, and Colwyn Cations Valvin. That is how the teams line up. That is their roster. As we see an early power play to the Mount Wellington Panthers and the New Plymouth Ravens on the penalty kill. Oh, nice little cross pass there. Didn't quite connect with the stick. Trying to tie that puck up, burn down the two minutes. Still in control, Mount Wellington Panthers just iron it up here. Oh, redirect goalie, off the goalie, nice little save. Stick down one of the Mount Wellington Panthers sticks there, contesting. Up and over the goalie, off the pads, off the glove. Good little tussle here so far. Ravens doing well to keep that penalty hook going. Panthers slow it down now, calm down the play. Looking for an early shot. Gloved by the goalie, but just dropped out in front on the rebound. Ravens away. Hugo Roy off down the rink. He's got Toby Webber from him. Sends the pass. 
shoots, but the goalie saves it. Nice little shorthand play there by the Ravens. Nice little tussle, clock ticks. So there's Bernie and up time on the time in the bin, and the penalty bin. We're on now, so that was a good penalty kill there by the New Plymouth Ravens. Kept Mount Wellington Panthers out little. Pass down the middle, but turns over the puck. Mount Wellington back on the on the charge. Good tussle there. Stopped them from shooting, so good defense. Super exciting Todd with this gold medal game. 16s. Some of our youth on display, isn't it? Just wonderful to watch. Yeah, it is. It's fa fantastic. These under 16s, and they are skillful players. So it will be a close game. All the pool games in this division were close, much like the seniors and the premiers. Oh, nice toe drag move there by Yvonne. Off the stick of one of the Ravens players. Just went high over the goal. Just sorting them, uh, you know, feeling each other out a little bit at the moment, I think. It's a, probably a little bit of nerves, too, for these young young kids. So, you know, these are big games for a lot of uh, young players. Centering pass there. Panthers now in control of the puck. It's tying it up on the boards. Ravens trying to keep it down there in, in front of the goal. Nice little clear out. Panthers walking it in. Oh, great little dangle there, but swept away. Roderick to slow things down, calm it down for the Ravens. Comes out from behind his goal. Thinks better of it. It's looking for the options to pass. Out to Henry, out to little Katie Henry. Looking for the pass out in front of the goal. Not quite there. What a breakaway shot and goal by Josh Leonard Dane. Wimmer. Oh, that's Leonard. Uh, Josh is actually wearing uh, Aunt Nathan's jersey. Oh, so it's a little go. bit confusing that um, Leonard has got Josh's jersey on, <laughs> on his back. But I guess that's the only one that fits in, perhaps. I don't, I'm not sure why that is. And a little bit of a turnover there and just let the players walk in. It was a one-on-one. -on -one. Great shot, though, right upstairs, yeah. unfortunately. Yeah, it was bar that was a bar down. You heard the big ting. Yeah. Right on that red bar. I know you want to be as impartial as possible, but that is a tough one. Yeah, it's always hard to be impartial. So that uh, is my home club, the New Plymouth Ravens. So, And starting goalkeeper happens to be... Son. Of, yeah, your son, so yeah. there you are. Oh, that's going to lead to a penalty. You can't do that. That was a bit of a close check yeah. towards the interference. area. So that will penalise the New Plymouth Ravens. And there goes the whistle as the Ravens hold the puck. So Katie Henry will go to the penalty bin for interference. As we see the referee signal that. Oh, a boarding call actually. Mm. Yeah. That arm uh, motion, boarding. So that will send the Mount Wellington Panthers to a yeah, there's, there's one person advantage. It's their second power play, just like that. Just We're only in inside a gold eight medal game. Yeah. That's um, maybe, like you said, a bit of nerves. That's early discipline issues. Yep. They will definitely have to tidy that up. Got to 
again, players are moving that puck on that outside. Bit of a similar setup to a lot of teams electing to have one person at the top, two on the sides, and one in front of the goal. But you see that uh, sometimes they're a little bit static, Todd. Like, you often need some movement to get the get the penalty killers moving as well so they're not it's it's very predictable when you're always in the same formation yeah, it is so they really need the idea when you've got those four players to so move that puck around get everybody moving it, it gets the uh, people in the penalty kill tired too so they, their legs or the goalies even the goalies legs for the rest of the game they've they've had a workout right at the very start so sometimes it's not about just scoring it's about making sure you work those players get them moving Good puck battle down low yep. for the puck possession. But Josh Dean comes away with it. Goes up top. Wrist shot. Doesn't get through. Max Toa there with a good deflection and is rewarded and skates away with it. They're looking for the pass. Hugo Roy is going to bring that back. So they'll just try and hold the puck now. A oh, little bit of a bobble there. Should have probably maybe dumped it long. Uh, Back in control, Mount Wellington Panthers. Nice stick in the way. Great defense work by the Ravens player there, Roderick. Nice. Well covered up there. Put the glove on it, hold it, slow the play down, burns that clock up and that uh, penalty kill. So that's um, Colwyn. Colwyn, occasions well. Yeah, Colwyn's a, a, a family name, Bay in Wales. I might not. Good surf location. And Ravens back in control. Right, only one goal on it, so Panthers lead. Yeah, back to four on four. Looks yeah. like this is where Deep Plymouth is quite dangerous. They've got a lot of talent on this team. Shot on goal. Nice little save straight at the goalie. Ten minutes gone. First half of the under-16 gold medal match. A noticeably larger squad than the Mount Wellington team. New Plymouth has got um, quite a lot of numbers. Which they seem yeah. to, that could be really good for team unity or team balance. Yeah, great to have uh, that many people in your, in your team and, and definitely uh, when your legs are getting tired but also great for the sport to see you know a big pool in your age group so you've got selection um, you know a lot to select from so that's Caleb Scott to Flint Roderick. Flint Roderick. Yeah. Oh. Sometimes Wellington. unusual there, like, again, like Connor had a clear path to try and go around the defender, but decided that, to put the puck back. back. Um, sometimes that happens in inline hockey. It's not always forward progress, forward attack. They, they do things in waves. But again, when you're the last defender, like there's just witnessed there, and gets the puck taken away, that can it can prove costly if you don't you don't do that properly or successfully, which puts extra importance on every one-on-one -on -one battle in every matchup that you have. Something I'm fairly confident that the coaching staff will have looked at. As Colwyn does well there to hold on to that puck, as um, Jojo was. Lurking in front of the net. That's Jojo Wang, number 57 in the Mount Wellington jersey. He's just been a bit tit for tat at the moment. Uh, there's been a bit of uh, tussling at both ends, a couple of shots on goal and stuff. Fairly evenly matched teams at the moment. But it doesn't take much, Todd, to have one team break away and change that score line. And it does happen really quickly and in an instant. So, as you see here, as players all collide, that was going to lead to a penalty, possibly against the Ravens. Yeah, I'd say that's Max Toa going to the bin for interference or, or checking. Just kind of impeding the progress of that Mount Wellington attacker. 
So Mount Wellington pulls the goaltender, electing to have an extra attacking player on the rink surface. So that should be five against four. Yeah, and this will give be the third. Great save by Velvin there. Yeah. Two saves with the pad. The third cool. power play for Mount Wellington in this yeah. first half. The Ravens really need to tidy up that discipline. Yeah, it's been something we've discussed already. You might see it again here as the players have collided. Um, two, is it two New Plymouth players kind of stop the progress of that Mount Wellington player and then just collide. Oh, yes, there was a stick involved as well. Yeah. Yeah, I think come charging in from the side, then one Ravens player tripped the other Ravens player and oh, bodies went flying over. everywhere. Yeah, Wellington looking to slow it down. They've got two minutes in this position. So probably another thing we need to explain is that these players do need to be careful of um, how many times they go in the penalty bin because if they go in three times, they are gone. Yeah, they're that out of the game. game. Yep. So I think we've seen two for Max Tau now. I think he went the Ooh, first one. Is in. that right? Yeah. Okay. So, yeah, he, so this is already only this is only the first half of the game. Yep. And he, I believe, is their captain. So someone who's quite valuable, more on the floor than off it. Needs to have a, a big deep breath, I would say. As Mount Wellington control the puck, nice little cross pass, not quite to the stick. Big shot, saved by the goalie. Oh, not quite, didn't glove it enough. The league's going. One timer oh. shot, and that's air mailed up into the netting. That is by um, Leonard Wimmer there. Sometimes the puck goes off what would be the toe of the stick not the heel or, or the mid portion of the blade and that's not really going to get great connection onto the puck as you've seen there and that puck just went right up into the netting uncontrolled uh, I think Mount Wellington has shown a really good patience here with this uh, power play they're, they're showing really nice patience do it moving the puck around um, for a, a bunch of young guys and girls, they're, they're showing really good patience. Not mm. rushing things too much, taking yeah. their chances when they can. A lot of teams do tend to sometimes rush and get flustered and yes, turn it over. Yes, at this age group, you yeah. notice that a, a fair amount that um, often with not having their full frontal lobes developed yet, they're not quite in that. Oh, there's a small giveaway here. Great save. And that's back to four on four as that Colwyn makes that save. Yeah, just saying about their, their mental capacities, and often that gets developed a little bit as they get up to 18, 20 years of age. But you're saying here already showing great composure at a young age, so that could come down to a lot of things. Maybe it's coaching, experience, handling pressure. Because you couldn't put them in a more pressurized situation. This is their top-level age group gold medal match for the New Zealand Nationals. So if they're already showing composure at this level, this grade, that bodes very well for them playing any sort of inline in the future. Yeah, it does definitely. And, and we looked at uh, Gary Toe and Nathan, the, both the two coaches, being around for a long time from the sport. Um, you know, great influence on these uh, young folks coming up. And there is some great, great senior players, premier players in our sport that do have a lot of influence over these young people and we see it a lot in a lot of sports across New Zealand and it's how we nurture and, and bring up and bring uh, you know grow fine adults basically not just sports people but grow, grow great adults Mount Wellington back in control now real shot test the goalie blocked by Hugo Roy trying to slow things down there just keep it calm cross pass there didn't quite connect. Oh. Really hammering the stick there. Hugo Roy still got it looking for his teammates, though. And I see Hugo has the C on his jersey, so he, I uh, stand corrected, he's the captain on that team. Often teams have different leadership groups, but yeah. yeah. Yeah, so we'll see the C and the A's. The A's are the assistant captains, so they have three or four A's. Uh, so the A's and the C's are the ones that can talk to the referees, just them. So we, we have a zero uh, tolerance for um, 
language and stuff on the on the ring when they're talking to the referees. So, you know, they are like us, volunteers. They're here to help grow the sport. So, um, you know, the kids are told, or the adults are told as well, I should say, <laughs> manners. Um, as much as it's the heat of the battle when we do get a little bit of red mist when we play sports, um, we need to, need to show respect to our game officials. So that last sequence is a great shot by Josh Stink. Oh, as two Raven players collide again, Max Toa involved again, <laughs> sending his own player down to the floor. Yeah, we, uh, you know, I was, I was just thinking of that North Harbour Wellington game the other day when uh, the North Harbour, uh, the Wellington player got sent off for taking out his own player. <laughs> that does not happen off today. <laughs> a yellow card for taking out your own player. I was like, I hadn't seen that before in rugby. No. Uh, it happened the other night in the game between Harbour and uh, Auckland. And it was the winger that took out the prop. Whoa. Yeah, <laughs> Try-saving tackle. They were trying to stop the North Harbour person from... Goodness. Down the rink they go. Bobble the pass, so Wellington back in control. Minute left in this first half. Yeah, just one goal in it, Todd, and down to the first minute of the first half. We played two 20-minute periods. Told to bring it out. Trying to use some speed. Does well to get away from one. Has two defenders swarm onto him and gets that puck taken away. Quite a good angle there is, uh, I think that, is that Jojo or is that um, Yvonne using the backside to kind of yeah. block the defender. Ooh, and that is a big collision there as Scott gets in the way of um, the Mount Wellington player going straight down to the floor, sending yeah. her upwards into the air. As the much larger Scott getting in the way there of the progress of um, that player. We'll see in a moment how that play eventuated. Yeah, it's interesting when I was both skating on their lines, but smaller person's always going to come off less. So you see here, gets so the puck, calls for it, Yvonne. Oh, and it's a knee on knee. Look at how much she just hyper extends that leg almost towards her head. And she is getting assisted off by um, Sherry Anderson, the manager of the Mount Wellington team. Quite a heavy collision there. Yeah, she, she changed angles and collided with him, but he tripped her, so that's that's the penalty call, I suppose. So another another penalty kill. Yeah, Ravens, Ravens really four. under under the gun. Four yeah. penalties in the first half in 20 minutes like that. I mean, sometimes that's act accidental contact, but that is in the moment. So, yeah, you do hope that not only is she okay, but you're, you're putting yourself in harm's way when you... You make a play like that, you cut into the middle of the uh, the rink. What a move by Toa, going one against two here. But Matt Wellington already looking to respond. Quick, hard shot, and it oh. just, oh. that puck was saved. Unfortunate event there for the goalkeeper as Steen had enough mustard on his shot to get it just over. Um, the outstretched arm of Velvin, the goalkeeper. So you see here, play develops as Steen coming down. Hard wrist shot, and it goes off of that blocker and then directly into in behind the goal on Cole and Cashin's Velvin. Just enough. So we're going to take a quick break here as we have a timeout call. And we will be back for the under-16s gold medal finals down here in Kitty Kitty Roll Hamilton. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. Yeah. This isn't about long-distance calling technology or living overseas. Go ahead, one more bid. Thank you. We're going to go once. We're going twice. And we are sold to the Kiwi phone bidder from Manchester. <laughs> it's about Baileys finding buyers that others can't. 
Whoops. Running on empty? Enjoy a six cents per litre fuel discount at your local Caltex with Pumped Every Day. Ah, feels good, eh? Get it at any participating Caltex. And we are back. New Zealand in line national club championships for 2022. We have the gold medal match between the Panthers and the New Plymouth Ravens down here in Kitty Kitty Roa Hamilton. Beautiful part of the Waikato. Would highly recommend you get a chance to get down here and come check it out. This rink has been absolutely amazing. They have added in some new fans. They have put in some new Perspex glass in behind the netting on the one side here, closest to the commentary box. They've upgraded the upstairs mezzanine. It is a fantastic place to be to watch and or play this sport of inline hockey. So we've just started the second half here of the gold medal match of the 16s age group. Um, I'm Ian Wanamaker, Tokuinoa, and I'm alongside Todd Velvin, two commentators for this matchup. And Matt Wellington have a two goal lead. So the New Plymouth Ravens looking to respond here, Todd, and getting themselves back in this gold medal match. Yeah, as we've said, uh, you know, 20 minutes is a, a lot of time in hockey, and we see them straight on attack. Nice little shot, but. A save. So that's Montel Majoribex there getting a, another shot on goal and kind of looking, he goes across his body a little bit with the glove to stop that hitting him from in the face area. Often goalies do that, they favor the glove. You can't glove the puck with a blocker, it'll just deflect off. So using the glove to hold on to it is sometimes a good option. For any of those young goalkeepers out there. So quickly as the Ravens go back on attack, looking for the centering cross. Quite get the stick to it, Roderick. But we are in a right old battle here. Toa is back in the thick of it, mixing it up against two Mount Wellington players, but Josh Steen comes away with it. Deep behind the goal, looking for support. And that's Roy muscling off Steen from the puck, gets it. Shot saved by the Jury Banks. A couple of great little battles going on in the front end. Good little battles. As we look right in front there, Toller in the thick of it as well. So what can New Plymouth do here, Todd? Are they gonna how are they gonna get themselves back into this matchup? Yeah, they're starting to really pressurize the uh, the goal there, so they yeah, yeah, trying. They need to be clean though, don't they? They need to be clinical. They need to stay out of the penalty bin. Um, you know, just, just play some good hockey. Keep that puck, pass around, plenty of shots on goal. It does become a bit of a mental game too, especially when you have no goals to show at the moment and you've, hard, you've had to kill off four penalties. 
Yeah, that's it. I mean, that, that's been the breaker for them, isn't it? Uh, Henry's this that last goal before half time really was the buzzer beater. So, you know, and there's been some really tight work here on the sticks with these uh, young guys really going at or young guys and girls going at it. And I think that's Jojo that took that hit earlier. So back out on the floor for the second half. Looks to have recovered from that um, massive knock that she took by, I believe it was Scott that was kind of impeding her from getting through. Being a very tall young person that Scott is, standing probably at well over six feet. Yeah, he's, he's, he's definitely taller than me. We've had a couple of little games against these guys, and yeah, he's a solid player. And his older brother's playing in the senior final today, so. Joel Scott for the New Plymouth Ravens. Uh, another one of those sort of senior players that we see in the seniors and prems that have played ice or something oh, like that. Great goal, goal there as Mount Wellington make a three spot up on the board. Great pass across. Yeah, I see Coach Gary Tyre for the Ravens changed the goalie at halftime. So we've got a new goalie out there, Sinead Cameron for the Ravens. Always hard as a goalie to come in that second half, and you yeah. haven't faced any shots yeah. yet. And then that, I think that's is that the first shot possibly was. Yeah. Oh. See no shots for almost four minutes, four and a half minutes, and then getting one shot and getting a goal against that again. That's a real mental battle that they got to fight to always reset because there's always going to be another play. Unless you're in overtime and you get scored on. I mean that that ends the game, but yeah. You, as long as you can kind of reset your brain, there will be future games. What a shot and save there is. Hugo Roy is absolutely robbed by Majori Banks. Was 1-0 on in front of the goalkeeper. Does well to stop that. As the referee adjusts the net. The net just sits on top of these uh, floor tiles, Todd, so it's kind of easily maneuvered around. Well, not that easy. It's a very heavy metal frame. Yeah, where it's ice, they have the little little pegs. Push it on the ice, makes it a little bit stable, but it does come off the pegs easy. It's designed to come off. Big shot save by Montel. Hugo Roy for the puck, trying to do something. Yeah, sometimes when the scoreline gets a little bit out of reach, some players choose to do a little bit more individual play to try and challenge the one-on-one -on -one situation to make a break, open things up. As you see here, oh, another opportunity, but Jory Banks does well with a poke check. Stopping that attempt. Good New Plymouth not out here. Shot, oh, oh, no! Roderick with a great shot. Far side, that was a great shot. Have a look at this. Used a bit of speed. And just as we say it, they respond very quickly, New Plymouth. Coming down two against two, faking to the inside, goes to the outside. Goaltender's oh. already down and shoots it to that far side goal. And, and that is, that's an inch inside that red post. That is. Back at it again, and what a diving block by Yvonne. Good body on the line, isn't it, for gold medal? Wow, and we have uh, got a penalty call here. Um, New Plymouth again being penalized, and that is an interference call. No, excuse me, that looks like Mount Wellington. Yeah, Take Josh. that back. I've just been so used to seeing the Ravens yeah. go to the penalty box. Now they have finally got it going the other way as Roderick goes around, showing that great speed and shot there. And it is a timeout call. Cool. So this is the Mount Wellington going to the penalty bin. So that will have a 30-second timeout in this gold medal match. And um, the scoreline at the moment is three goals to one. So New Plymouth can get right back in this 12-41. So lots of hockey to be played, Todd, with great action happening here. And Kerry Kerroa in Hamilton, as many people in the stands are starting to acknowledge the birthday boy, the birthday man standing <laughs> beside me. He's getting lots of love from the, uh, the crowd, from the fans and the crowd. Oh. Could be some fun, though. Could be some just some admirers of Ad yours, Todd. Who we just yeah. never know. Yeah, well, we'll call them admirers, eh? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. It makes you feel better. Absolutely. <laughs> Why? <laughs> it's your birthday. Anything to make you feel good yeah. is on order. 
So what's on order right now is a couple of goals for the New Plymouth Raiders. They need to get themselves two of them to tie the game. It is 3-1 as Coach Nathan, Nathan there giving his instructions to uh, the Mount Wellington team and Mr. Gary Toa giving instructions to that massive group of Ravens as you hear a nice cheer there from their side. This is what you play for. It is indeed. It is what you play for. It is, you know, these good battles that you remember. So they will be going hell for leather in this one. So Henry Kill, Mount Wellington, they've got to try and hold this out here. Keep that scoreline 3-1. Ravens want to close it up, put it within one. 12 minutes left on the clock. Mount Wellington are going to dump the puck here. Get it out of his zone. Burn a bit of time on the clock. So keep that top clock ticking. Two minutes is a long time. Down they come. Oh, Caleb, Caleb Scott in front of goal. Big guy for the block of the goal. Shot was wide. See Montel and Caleb Scott doing a great job down in front here. Hard to see on the screen, but hit the post. So the Ravens have got their biggest player standing in front of the net, trying to block the view of the goalie. Got to say, that's a great view as well, that shot there, seeing the whole ring from behind the net. Yeah. Lovely camera work there. Eye on that shot. Oh, good redirect there. The pass is still there. Nice arm by Montel there, reaching out, putting that glove on it. Good, good vision. And showing some good strength too, as you see the shot come through, and Montel is there holding his ground, putting the hand on top of that puck, and Scott battling for it to try and get that puck past the line, but Jerbanks uh, holds the line. Resetting the play now. It's been about a minute to go, maybe a little less in this power play for the Ravens. Oh, high again. Not quite on the net. We need to get those shots on the net. That's another block there. Yeah, great defense work by uh, Vaughn. Oh, redirect again by Scott, but just going wide of the goal. Four on. Great penalty kill by oh, off the boot of Marjorie Banks, Montel. Good work by Mount Wellington there. Yeah, Shut it's a very out. good penalty kill. Yeah. And now they're probably going to just try to hold on to it a little bit here, making the Ravens chase, using up that energy as Josh Dean winds things up. And deflected away by Toa. Yeah, great pace of old Josh Dean. He's, got, he's a quick skater. He's here, yeah. across, the, across the ring. I was going to call it the ice there for a minute. It does look like yeah. ice, this beautiful blue tile. Mm. And he is actually a very mature young man, I would call him. Um, very uh, good hockey intelligence, good IQ, sees the game well. A uh, big leader on that Mount Wellington team. Bit of a sponge. He soaks up a lot of information. Anyone that's uh, that's coaching him, teaching him, which bodes well for him or any young person that yeah, listens to uh, any advice on anything, not just uh, in inline hockey. Wow, any any coach loves those sponges. Don't necessarily need to have the, the greatest natural talent, but if you're a sponge and you soak it up, they're easy to coach and they will get there. Yeah. Often it's those hard workers with good attitudes. It's in, sometimes the talent can take you so far, but if you have a good attitude and you're willing to work for it, sometimes that will reward you with team selections. As the goaltender there, Bernie Plymouth scrambling around, but manages to keep that puck out of the net. Bernie Plymouth coming back down here, taking a oh. shot high and wide over the goal. Great little play. Kate Henry there just missing. Play really opening up back other way. Shot. Oh, and that was one that 
Leonard scored on to open the scoring in the yeah. game with that same shot. There was plenty of net there too. The goalie was down. There was a, a big top corner. There's been a few sort of uh, accuracy issues here with both teams on their shots. Roderick brings it out. Now Roderick's a bit like Steen. He's got a lot of pace. Still. Both of them going together. What a play. Great passing play by New Plymouth. An absolute clinic. Robertson does the hard work. Cuts down the side. Gives it over to Henry. And Henry feeds. Oh, excuse me. To Scott. And Scott passes it over to Henry. Kate, and she just buries oh. it. Yeah, so Roderick does the loop round. Scott turns to everybody. Henry. Bang. In the net. 3-2 hockey that, game. That's what coaches love, seeing that stuff. That's a great goal. That's a great team goal. We only give one assist these days, but there was really two there. There was oh, Roderick to Scott. You could give two on that <laughs> for sure. Oh, as we get another penalty call straight away after going on 3-2. to two. I think he's gone. I think that's three. That could be three penalties for Max Toa. He may now be out of the gold medal game. And he has been given a misconduct penalty by the referees. That's the symbol where the referees puts those hands on the hips, resulting either that might mean he may have said something or something communicated to the referees in a, in a negative manner. However, that that oh. automatically would put him out of the game, yeah, regardless of three penalties. When you get 10-minute misconduct, you are thrown out of the match. So we shall see what happens to young Max Toa here. So what happens here is normally they'll put someone else in the bin. So it'll be a, a four on three. And then after they've served the first two minutes, that person will go back to four on four, four on four. But Max will not be back for this game. So as the referee goes over to the New Plymouth player bench, possibly giving those instructions, that someone may need to serve that penalty. Yep, so here comes the next player. So Quinn Henson will serve the penalty. So he will serve a two-minute penalty for Max and come back on after two minutes. And, and Max will have to sit in the remainder and the, of this yeah. game. Yep. Oh, well, as the Ravens come away with it, Hugo Roy. Does well to pull around. But what a save and outstretched bad by Majori Banks. Denies Hugo Roy's chance. Oh, another great save on the other end. As Shanae Cameron makes a good save. Ravens with the puck here, so. Tying it up. Panthers now got it. Back in control to calm things down in this power play. Six minutes left on the clock in this final for the under 16s. Roderick again with the puck. Now we know he's got a bit of a shot and a bit of skill on him. He is fast. Passes it back to Roy. Ravens are going to go for the shorthand goal, but no, they've turned it over. Oh, there they go. A move there and a great goal by Leonard Wimmer with the forehand backhand maneuver going over the top of the outstretched Cameron. Even though it says Steen on the back of that jersey, that is in fact Leonard Wimmer, number 95. As you see, he does well to get that puck off the defender. Takes it back from the forehand to the backhand, making it a 4-2 game. And now New Plymouth is even strength back to four on four. But Max Toa is in that box for the remainder of the game. They do have all the work to do now, New Plymouth. As that puck hits the, um, one of Heater. the heaters, actually. Heater, yeah. Yeah, the, are mounted above this nice inline rink. Yeah, so anytime that happens, any times it hits the boards, the, not the boards, the partitions of the beams, heaters, there will be a stop. Ravens still uh, can get themselves back in this game. Remember, if it goes to one, it is stop clock. 
Yeah, do you um, consider pulling the goaltender here as well to try and get on that attack, or is that too early, Todd? Do you want to try and get that next goal and then think about it when it's down to stop clock? Yeah, I think uh, your next could be goal, the safer play. Four minutes. You're looking at pulling that goalie maybe around that minute 30, minute mark, you know. A lot of hockey can happen in a minute for you in one, within one. You know, what have you got to lose, really, haven't you? Mm. Pull that goalie, get that five on. You've got to have the puck before you pull the goalie, though. And you've got to have control. Which they've just given up here. Is, oh, they have it, and then get it back. So, it, again, back and forth. New Plymouth looking to use the depth of their bench as well. Shot deflected away. They're still playing uh, reasonably calm. They're still, they are taking the opportunities, but they're resetting the play like this. Taking their subs where they can. Because these guys will be getting tired. Looks like Gary Tarr has shortened his lines. He's not using the full bench. Hugo Roy brings it down. Shot saved by Montel. Two players on. Oh, I think that was a bit rough. That's a stick penalty against Hugo Roy. And then as Steen did relatively well to hold on to that puck while the battle continued and ensued. I don't know if that was tripping. Oh, there may be another call here as oh, well. As, um, yeah, that is an offsetting call against Josh yeah. Steen. So there will be a call against the Mount Wellington yeah. Panthers and he's, against New Plymouth he's Ravens. He's got a sportsmanship conduct one. So they're both battling, which yeah, was four, fair. Four now. And there was a retaliatory action by um, Josh Steen. So that will negate the, the first penalty, I guess, and they will be equalized. However, there's still, what is it, three minutes three 13 minutes. left in this game. So extra importance as you've taken basically some of the top two players from yeah. each side out yeah. of the game. We're on four, so they can't come back on until there's a stoppage of play after their two minutes is served. So that's a, at a minute and nine seconds, so the crucial points of this gold medal game. What will we see happen? Yeah, it was an interesting penalty, that one. I, I, I think he played the puck really well. Kind of got the stick caught a little yeah. bit in the body and, and just in the opinion of the referee, yeah. saw yeah. a trip, but... I think that's often uh, what happens in judgment. I think Josh Dean must have said something, maybe, because we don't take well, that. Well, he did retaliate to yeah. the, um, ah, to the to Toa, uh, not Toa, to uh, Hugo Roy. Hugo Roy, that was kind of, he upended him a little bit, which resulted in that penalty for him. I guess when there's a lot on the line, the, the emotions run high, and, you know, in that, like you mentioned earlier, the, the battle moment. I think he felt a bit hard done by by getting tripped and then retaliated. So yeah, discipline is always a factor. It is indeed. Yep. It's a bit of a giveaway. Oh, as Yvonne gets taken out again by Scott. Just as players collide, that's just kind of what we call that a hockey play. Yep. Yeah, little person on big person game, but it was clean. It was. Yeah, just, no malice, no. Yep. Just skating into each other. What it is now? A minute and 33 seconds left in the game. So now do you pull the goal? You got the puck. So quick. <laughs> Haven't seen any indication to the goalie. We're coming down inside a minute. This last. get possession oh. of that puck, so hopefully they can hold it and keep it. Likes to get it back. Good stick handling there, but it's dropped in the middle of the rink. Now New Plymouth have it. Under a minute to go in this gold medal match. Caleb Scott, the shot way up into the mesh. It's deflected, and that will bring a stoppage, and both players will return back to the rink surface. So that's Josh Steen and Hugo Roy. Oh, it looks and like we are playing stop clock, too. Oh, All right, they've started again. The clock has... Yeah, it stopped for a minute. It Let's will continue. continue. Oh, oh, 
Oh, shot right there, deflected away. away. Oh, and the defender gloves it down, electing to play the role of the keeper was Yvonne. What a battler she's been this game. Yeah, showing true, absolutely right. as a blinder. Great fortitude, just body on the line and doing everything for her team. Great to see them not giving up. It's only six under 10 seconds to go. But it's been a battle the whole way. Oh! Shot right near the end of this game as players battle. A little bit of extra given at the end of the game. Possibly frustration showing through there as Scott not too pleased. That should do it there for the gold medal between the 16s. Now Wellington coming out on top. Yeah, so as uh, we see these guys celebrate their uh, middle down there. Ian will wander down to the sidelines and, and do uh, a quick little chat with some of the players after this. Both teams, great battle. It's been a great great tournament for both teams it's always hard to to come this far and take away the silver but unfortunately that is sport so Mount Wellington and Panthers they will walk away with the under 16 gold medal today the Ravens New Plymouth Ravens will take the silver and the Devils and the Devils will take the bronze that's how the under 16 league will finish for the 2022 Inline Hockey Nationals here in Kirikiriyawa. Next year we are going further south. We are going to Wanganui next year for our Inline Hockey Nationals. Big round of applause from the crowd sort of starting to wind up, I think, there from the players as they all shake hands. Again, just take that opportunity to thank our sponsors and stuff as we see everybody shaking hands. So we've got uh, Hockey Locker, Hockey Wise, Caltex, Pure Athletic, New Zealand Carbon Farming, Apollo Projects, Bailey's Real Estate, and Whaka Ata Māori. So they're bringing us this beautiful live stream, the stream shot, Māori TV. Thank you very much for your kind support. We are just getting ready now to go to a cross we will go down to the sidelines to Ian Wanamaker um, and catching up with some players down there. Ian. Kia ora and welcome back to, we just had the 16s gold medal match between the Mount Wellington Panthers and the New Plymouth Ravens. And I'm lucky to be joined alongside um, one of the players, the assistant captain from the New Plymouth Ravens, Max. So uh, um, hard fought final there. Um, what are your thoughts on that game? Oh, all the boys left it out there. I think we did the best we could with what happened. We put up a fight so we could really ask for. Yeah, absolutely. Um, you've got to be certainly very proud and making it to the finals is, is an absolute achievement. So you can go away from this knowing that you guys gave it all out there and um, you should be certainly proud of, of all your efforts. So, so well done. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, just want to shout out to all the boys. They put it all out there. A lot of hard fought games in the weekend through the whole season. So yeah, great boys. Excellent. Uh, all the best and congratulations on making to this and good luck all the way moving forward. Awesome. Uh, great words in, in, uh, in defeat, uh, getting a silver medal for the New Plymouth Ravens. And we're going to get alongside next is uh, Josh Steen uh, from the Mount Wellington team. So um, hear from, from him. Come on through, Josh. Uh, kia ora, Josh. Uh, can we get your thoughts on that gold medal? Well done. Oh, it's beautiful. You know, our teams, are, we didn't have the best start to the tournament, but we picked it up. It's great. I, I couldn't ask for a better team. Now, at the start of this year, we had nothing, but uh, I really got to thank Ant. You know, he's he's really brought us together. You know, he's really he's made something yeah. of what was previously nothing. But yeah, I thought it was I thought we deserved it. We played we played like we deserved it. Excellent. Well, a gold medal at 16s at the national tournament. You got to be proud. Um, very good to, to acknowledge your coach. But you guys put in the effort in the mahi, and uh, you certainly earned that victory. So congratulations. Um, well done. Go and celebrate. Great tournament. Thank you. Appreciate it. Excellent. Uh, so we're going to cut to a break now, and that just has our 16s. We're going to be um, taking a momentary break, but you're going to come back live action. We're going to see Prem Women's 
and senior men's um, for the rest of our finals day here down in Kirikiriroa, Hamilton. Stay tuned.